Chapter 1, A Little of My Life 4 In a vast isolated area covering a very large region southeast of Tokyo, outside the urban suburbs of the city, a young man manipulated the body of an elderly woman with quick yet delicate movements. After placing the corpse inside a metal capsule of sorts, he took off his gloves and tossed them aside. 8. Come on, Thaddeus, don't be so dramatic. Although our job involves dealing with corpses, we need to separate ourselves from work and not appear like a lifeless fish easily mistaken for a corpse all the time. You have to show some expressions, smile a little, said a man named Kota Otie, wiping sweat off his face with a smile. He tried to converse with the peculiar Thaddeus in the same tone older, arrogant individuals used to scold the younger generation. 10. Of course, Kota Otie was older than the young man called Thaddeus. 1. That fire consumes the soul. You've only been here for a few weeks, but I've seen corpses burn in the fire since I was a child. Tell me honestly, Kota, could you smile if you touched a corpse instead of hugging a stuffed animal since you were a child? After verifying that the hermetic chamber was properly sealed, Thaddeus initiated the cremation of the corpse. 6. Thaddeus was doing all the work of lifting the body and then placing it in a sturdy container, like a coffin or some sort of special box, before finally introducing it into the cremation chamber. This chamber is designed to withstand high temperatures and is usually lined with refractory materials. 2. Meanwhile, Kota OTA took care of all the legal processes before handling the corpses that arrived at this crematorium. One could say that cremating a body in a foreign country might be rare, but in a place like Japan, it is extremely common. In fact, Thaddeus had mixed feelings about handling corpses, but there was no way to change his life. His grandfather was a Japanese man in charge of this old crematorium, while he was an orphan with both foreign and Japanese roots. Although Thaddeus might have wanted a different life, the lack of parents and resources led him to work at this place from an early age. Ultimately, everyone must redirect their life when it comes to their circumstances. However, it's not like he had no other kind of upbringing. As someone grateful to his grandfather for raising him from a young age, he repaid the favor by working in this place. In all of this, he was somewhat optimistic. His grandfather, Kaido Sato, said that after his death, Thaddeus would be the sole owner of this private crematorium. By then, he would only need to sign paperwork in the office, signing and continuing to sign until the money reached his hands. At that time, someone else would take his place, and his employees would work hard to keep this place running. 7. However, a few years after leaving high school for an indefinite period and dedicating himself to this job, his grandfather was still alive, more vibrant than a young university student. If it weren't for some recent events, Thaddeus would have left this place long ago. 1. Plus one corpse cremated, the flames of your soul have increased. Thaddeus stood momentarily still, like a tree. His eyes fixed on the flames, and suddenly, an energy rushed through his veins, reaching every corner of his body in a matter of seconds. Yes, he had a strange panel that granted him some incomparable special abilities. 7. Oh my god. Kota Otie, his co-worker, exclaimed dramatically. Move a little, I'm becoming more convinced that you have some kind of fetish for corpses. 1. Stop being so noisy. I just remembered something from an old book I read last night. Thaddeus shook his head and left. That was the last corpse he had to process today. He had taken care of almost all the work throughout the day, so it was his time to rest. Tsitsi, Tsitsi. After leaving the crematorium, Thaddeus suddenly stopped as an electric current flashed in his ears. Instinctively, he looked towards the left slope. After the sun had set, the path in front of the crematorium became dark and gloomy with the sounds of animals, and generally, no one walked there at night. A restless soul is nearby, please grant it eternal rest. 12. That cold, monotonous voice made Thaddeus, who had stopped, smile. He clenched his fists tightly and whispered, after half a month, another cursed spirit appeared in this place. Indeed, in the distant shadow, a dark figure revealed itself. When Thaddeus clearly saw the cursed spirit, he couldn't help but furrow his brow. That energy. Is it really a class 1 cursed spirit? 3. The dark and slender body in the distance seemed to have been drenched in oil. Its shoulders were broad, but its arms were thin and very long, dragging on the ground. It had three eyes on its head, with the middle one being dark red. Leave my grandson alone, you damned abusers. Thaddeus rose for a moment. These cursed spirits, also known as curses, were divided into classes. They were categorized into five basic classes. Class 4 is the lowest, and they can be dealt with using a simple wooden bat. Class 3 cursed spirits can be eliminated with gunpowder weapons. Class 2 cursed spirits, however, are something that ordinary people cannot handle. 3. For this class, the curses start to bind. From class 4 to class 2, they are cursed spirits easy to deal with. But as the level of their cursed spirit power increases, so does their intelligence. In these cases, some are born, while others evolve into higher levels. 1. The class 1 cursed spirits, just like the one in front of Thaddeus, are intellectual curses, and the appearance of this curse is of someone very close to him. Yes, that figure belonged to his grandfather, who had just gone out for a walk. 2. This explains my grandfather's recent change. The reason he miraculously recovered from his illness is because of your existence. Thaddeus discovered that his grandfather had been suffering from a very advanced and aggressive cancer recently, but something happened that left him perplexed. At a certain moment, his grandfather miraculously recovered. Although it's true that his words and actions after that were strange, he didn't sense anything out of the ordinary at the time. But now, thinking about it, all those events seemed unreasonable until this class 1 cursed spirit appeared, clarifying all the doubts in Thaddeus' mind. Behind the class 1 cursed spirit, crushed fruits lay scattered, and their direction was toward the place where Thaddeus' grandfather used to spend most of his time. Although my grandfather was cynical, he was a father figure whom I respect and appreciate very honestly. He liked to plant fruit trees, often sneezed forcefully, and didn't brush his teeth. But he was honest with his feelings, and I never hated him. Thaddeus looked at his staff in the distance, furrowed his brow, and turned back to the class 1 cursed spirit. My grandfather has possibly left this world, so now I will kill you and free my grandfather's body from an invading curse. Aren't you afraid? The class 1 cursed spirit in Thaddeus' grandfather's body was a little surprised. What it said a moment ago was not part of its desires but rather the obsession of the possessed body of Kaido Sato. Just now, it wanted to kill some people, but when it was about to do so, it encountered this boy who seemed to be the grandson of the recently possessed body. Now, knowing that his grandfather had disappeared, he was very calm. It had been observing Thaddeus for three months, and there was nothing unusual about him. This young man only complained about wanting to quit the cremation job, but suddenly, he calmed down. Thaddeus being calm made the class 1 cursed spirit feel very displeased. 
scared or perhaps surprised. Thaddeus looked at the class 1 cursed spirit in front of him and then remembered that since receiving rewards for cremating corpses in large quantities, he hadn't noticed that his grandfather had been possessed. This time, Thaddeus would free his grandfather's body, an elderly man who had suffered greatly in this life. Seeing that Thaddeus didn't speak anymore, the class 1 cursed spirit seemed to dispel its misgivings. A young man without a hint of power couldn't generate fear in it, so it rushed forward, trying to resolve Thaddeus with a single blow. Thaddeus was waiting for this critical moment. As the class 1 cursed spirit charged towards him, he slid his right leg, and his fist descended and took a deep breath. With a seemingly simple punch, within a second after the class 1 cursed spirit invaded his safe zone, a white light formed in Thaddeus' fist, and his punch synchronized with that energy, increasing its speed. 4. Boom, the chest of the class 1 cursed spirit sank under that blow, and its entire body flew like a bullet and crashed into the trail in the distance, stirring up dust and smoke. Thaddeus retracted his arm and lifted his right foot from the ground, looking at the dust and smoke rising in the distance, he murmured, under normal circumstances, an ordinary cursed spirit would have been crushed by that blow. It seems that class 1 curses are different. Is it because the cursed energy in his grandfather's body was insufficient? 1. Well, it doesn't matter now. Anyway, you must be eliminated today. Thaddeus moved his arm and took off the shirt that was torn due to the strong blow he had just unleashed. After that, he walked towards the class 1 cursed spirit. 2. The smoke and dust hadn't dissipated yet, but the dark figure had disappeared from the crack in the ground. Feeling a presence to his left, Thaddeus come eye scanned the surroundings, and suddenly, as he felt the air rushing forcefully from one side, all he could do was raise his arms to block his chest. At that moment, a strong pain ran through all the bones in his arms, and he was sent flying, crashing near the crematorium. This body really can't withstand that much damage. Thaddeus had strengthened his body with his own exercises to adapt to the immense power growing within him, but in fact, the results of his training couldn't stop the physical attack of a class 1 cursed spirit. At this moment, both his arms were broken. There was indeed some danger at this moment. Although the first encounter with that power coming from the corpses was very pleasant for his body and soul, the force of his initial attack was not enough to eliminate his enemy. However, invaded by a feeling of powerful determination that came from his soul, he wasn't scared. Instead, the boiling blood in his body made him grit his teeth and move from his position. 3. In the next moment, a large hole opened where Thaddeus had moved, and the strange aura senselessly emanated from the surroundings, causing the class 1 cursed spirit to reveal its power as well. Take this blow again. Thaddeus appeared in the air, forcefully pressing his right foot down, and as he was about to touch the head of the class 1 cursed spirit, the black and blue light appeared again on his right leg. 4. Boom. Once again. Thaddeus swept his leg again immediately after landing, and the black and blue light shone instantly, merging with the white aura. 1 kick, 2 kicks, 2, 3 kicks, boom, 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 on the 6th kick, Thaddeus slowed down. Can I only perform this attack 6 times? Is this the limit of combining 2 energies? Thaddeus' legs were a little weak after landing at a safe distance. The class 1 cursed spirit, with its current strength, couldn't withstand the immense power of Thaddeus' physical attacks and was already at its limit after issuing 6 kicks with its energy. After all, the class 1 cursed spirit, for some strange reason, wasn't in sync with the body it had possessed. The head and body of its host had been hit with such physical force that its body had a hard time assimilating it. At this moment, its soul began to die and collapse, cracking the soul that controlled Thaddeus' grandfather's body even more. After all, these aren't ordinary attacks with cursed energy, that energy strikes my soul directly. The cursed spirit slowly disappeared. Thaddeus regained mobility in his broken arms. After seeing the collapsed class 1 cursed spirit, he muttered, Did that class 1 curse die? Its soul shouldn't be deeply incarnated in my grandfather's body, so it must be at its limit. By the way, how many points will this give me? 3. Creator's Thoughts S.R. Cuervo You can read more chapters on my Patreon, S.R. Cuervo Chapter 2, A Sword of Fire Thaddeus spoke of the so-called soul points, something special he obtained after reincarnating in this world approximately 10 years ago. 17. These points correspond to an accumulation of points that Thaddeus can obtain involuntarily for his basic stats. He can acquire soul points by becoming the guardian of a soul that leaves its mark in a particular place, such as a place where people leave their deceased relatives, or in this case, a crematorium. Since he discovered he could be the guardian of the dead and with the abilities granted to him to eliminate cursed spirits, as that elderly voice in his head labeled them, he inherited the power of Shinjiku Nijinisai Yamamoto, who was an extremely powerful man in his time. 12. These soul points are special as they can raise his abilities corresponding to the inheritance he received. The stronger the cursed spirit, the more points he will obtain, making him stronger, and occasionally he may even tap into a fraction of the true power of this man called Yamamoto. 6. As he didn't have direct access to his general and special attribute panel, Thaddeus took charge of finding ways to collect soul points so that he could assign those points as he pleased in the future. The voice that spoke to him when it bestowed this power told him to be worthy, respect the rules, and become someone who safeguards humans under the influence of cursed spirits. Then, something changed this time when he eliminated a cursed spirit. He felt a force and a desire to keep advancing despite the wounds on his body. Yamamoto's were burned in his muscles, it had been like that since he was a child. For that reason, he couldn't break the rules of the crematorium, just as he couldn't do so at school. 8. However, that changed when someone mocked him upon learning that his family owned a crematorium. He knew it was merely a provocation from a child, but when he thought of those souls who thanked him before transcending, an uncontrollable fury filled him. Who could mock death in such a way? As a result, he punched that child and broke his arm. 2. In his previous life, he didn't live much, he died suddenly during boxing training, and it seemed like a heart attack. They couldn't save him, and he could have survived if he had the resources to check his body annually and find out that something was wrong with his heart. However, there was nothing to regret. 2. This time, Thaddeus had a much more important mission, to eliminate all the cursed spirits in this world and serve as a guide for all those souls that needed to transcend peacefully. 14. At the moment, Thaddeus had no soul points, as they were automatically assigned. He hoped that this time, he would be worthy of inheriting Yamamoto's initial power. The man was strict and stubborn, as it had been 10 years, and he still hadn't obtained that right. 1. 
Although he learned everything about the cursed spirits and much about this new world, he didn't want to venture into dangerous territory without at least having half of the power he could possess if he obtained the right to use his inheritance. However, Thaddeus wasn't too worried about this, nor was he in a hurry. Now that he had eliminated a weakened class 1 cursed spirit with his exceptional martial arts, which were among the best in close combat, he focused on gaining more experience and improving his physical abilities to eventually be worthy of accepting the elder's inheritance. 5. And what gives him comfort? He's grateful not to know too much about this world, as it means there's nothing to worry about. What will happen will happen, and he will face it head on, that's his character, and he accepts it with open arms. 24. Congratulations, you have met the requirements to become the heir of the Lord of Flames. 8. You have killed a weakened class 1 cursed spirit and obtained 3000 soul points. 5. Fight with honor and bleed in battle, you have earned the right to interact with your general attribute panel. 1. A systematic voice sounded in Thaddeus' mind. He was thrilled to finally be able to interact with his general attribute panel, and those 3,000 soul points were so many that he couldn't imagine everything he could do with them right now. The majority of the cursed spirits he encounters in this place are class 3 and 4, so eliminating a class 1 could be considered madness. The amount is so substantial that Thaddeus, who has been fighting since he arrived in this world, felt excitement rising. Opening general attribute panel. Thaddeus saw a panel appearing right in his mind. When he closed his eyes, he could see this blazing and dazzling panel filled with unimaginable information. 2. Name, Thaddeus Sato. 5. General Attributes. Strength, level 6 956 slash 1100. Speed, level 7 1150 slash 1300. Endurance, level 5 808 slash 900. Spirit, level 8 1360 slash 1700. Skills, Zenjutsu, Swordsmanship, Skill, level 00 slash 100. 5. Hakuta, Hand-to-Hand -hand Combat, Skill, level 2 250 slash 500. Hoho, Movement and Speed, Skill, level 4 790 slash 900. 2. Kidu, Magic, Skill, level 00 slash 100. Zenpakito Information, Zenpakito Name, Raijim Jukka. 11. Zenpakito Type, Fire Type Zenpakito. 1. Shikai Release Skill, Shikai Skill, the Shikai Skill of Raijin Jukka is called Anetsujigoku, Hellfire. When activated, Raijin Jukka's flames intensify and engulf the surrounding area. These flames are extremely hot and practically indestructible, capable of burning anything they touch. Additionally, the heat generated by the flames is sufficient to melt steel and reduce it to ashes. 20. Shikai Skill Level, Shikai Skill Level, Level 0 slash 100. Bankai Release Skill. Bankai skill, the Bankai of Raijin Jaka is called Zenka no Tachi, Sun's Flame Incineration. With this final release, Yamamoto unleashes the true destructive power of his Zenpakuto. The Bankai envelopes his sword in even more intense flames and creates a fiery aura around his body. In this state, Yamamoto can freely control and manipulate fire, allowing him to launch powerful and devastating attacks. 21. Bankai Skill Level Bankai Skill Level, Level 0 Slash Sealed Cursed Level Cursed Level Description, Level 2 300 Slash 500 Additional Abilities or Powers Obtained in Cursed Level, 0. Souls Sent to Eternal Rest, 1200 Souls. Spirits of Cursed Beings, 74. Soul Points, 3000. 1. Thaddeus immediately added the first 100 soul points to his Shikai release skill, and soon a surge of heat filled his body, and a staff materialized before his eyes. Ryajim Jaka Sword, Fire Zen Pakito, sealed and can be released at the owner's will. 4. Haha. This is super amazing, I want to keep increasing the power of this mighty sword. If its fire is as powerful as it claims to be, I'll be able to burn all the cursed beings. Thaddeus smiled with newfound confidence. The most important thing now was that he had just killed a cursed being with his fists, so now that he had a sword, it would be much easier to do. How could he not be excited? 1. By upgrading his Shikai to level 4, Thaddeus, who thought he had plenty of soul points, was alarmed to find that he had spent 1600 just to upgrade his Shikai power to level 4. 3. Congratulations on mastering your Shikai form, you have gained the following abilities. Ability, Jokaku Injo, Burning Fortress. Description, the flames of Raijin Jaka create a gigantic wall of fire that is used to hold one or multiple targets captive for an unspecified amount of time. Ability, Teimatsu, Torch. Description, this ability can create a great inferno with the simple movement of Raijin Jaka. The fire generated by the attack consumes everything caught within the flames until nothing remains but ashes. The flames created by Raijin Jaka can be precisely controlled by Yamamoto to attack only the targets he chooses and he also has power over the intensity of the flames. Ability, Enetsu Jigoku, Flames of Hell. Description, this technique involves releasing giant columns of fire over a specific area. The purpose of Enetsu Jigoku is to enclose the target within that hell and completely destroy it. Even if it means immolating the attacker, the victim, and anything within the perimeter of the technique. Upgrade the last two abilities, Enetsu Jigoku to level 3 and Teimatsu to level 2, and raise my swordsmanship skill to level 2. With this kind of growth, as long as he continues to increase his strength correctly, wouldn't he be considered one of the most powerful beings that eliminate cursed beings? He was thinking of all that power, those blazing flames shining on his sword. He remembered that in his past life, he had seen very little of this world, but he knew that someone like Gojo Satoru, who was the most powerful existence in this world as far as he knew, was incredibly powerful. 12. Of course, Thaddeus didn't mind improving gradually. After all, he had a will to uphold. Cough, cough, cough. At that moment, Thaddeus was surprised to hear a cough. Wasn't that his grandfather? Grandpa, you're alive. What the hell am I doing naked in this place? 6. Early in the morning the next day, after a tough night of discovering that his grandfather had mysteriously come back to life, Thaddeus thought that something must have happened because that cursed being he eliminated with his own hands had repaired his grandfather's body. Grandpa, wake up. It can't be, are you dead? Grandpa, I'm alive, you little demon. Oh, what a pain. My back hurts so much. Thaddeus' grandfather painfully sat up in his bed. 5. Great, Grandpa, I want to go to school again. Thaddeus ignored his grandfather's pain as he had given him some of his spiritual energy last night and made sure he recovered from the superficial wounds he had. 1. The day passed much more peacefully than usual as the crematorium had no corpses today, so Thaddeus spent the time with his grandfather. 
Hey, do you really want to go back to studying? You know you can't just hit the students no matter what they say. You must consider your future at all costs. Thaddeus' grandfather was much more serious than usual, wanting his grandson to have a life far from corpses and forget the past. Thaddeus smiled and shook his head. What kind of millionaire would I be if I don't study properly? Grandpa, now that you're feeling better, I want to go to school, and I can use the money you paid for my work hours. Seeing that Thaddeus had that sparkle in his eyes again, Kaido Sato, though a little sad, was much happier for his grandson and said, if you can be accepted, you can definitely study, right? Yes, I've been looking at some schools, and I want to study at this one. Thaddeus, who knew little about the world, made a selection. Only in this way could he improve in the future and become a truly powerful person who protects the human world just as his role model, the mighty Yamamoto. 10. Creator's Thoughts. S.R. Cuervo. You can read more chapters on my Patreon, S.R. Cuervo. Chapter 3, The Following Steps. A week later, Thaddeus's grandfather began to manage the crematorium again, this time with the new workers he had hired. As for Koto Otie, who was working at the crematorium that night, he was completely unaware of what had happened, but he resigned in a strange manner a few days later. Thaddeus's grandfather seemed fine, but this raised some doubts in Thaddeus's mind. However, he decided to push aside these stressful thoughts and focus on his future. He knew that his mentality was different from others due to his past life experiences, which sometimes felt unsettling. A year and a half had passed since he left high school, but there were certain methods he could use to advance to the next level after a temporary suspension. With his knowledge of his past life, it was not difficult for Thaddeus to enroll in another high school. He applied to attend a certain jiu-jitsu school, with a plan to connect with the magical world of this world. Thaddeus already possessed the power to defend himself, but he wanted to learn more about this world by joining a jiu-jitsu school. His plan was to get closer to certain people who would play significant roles in this world's future and naturally become a part of it. He knew there was a school of wizards in Tokyo, but going there without an invitation could cause a lot of trouble. Besides, he wanted to serve as a guide for the departed souls he encountered. Cemeteries, crematoriums, and places of mourning were where the frequencies of souls were most abundant. Once he arrived at these places, all he had to do was expand his soul energy to erase those traces and gain points. These points would randomly increase his general statistics, making it beneficial for him. Thaddeus, remember not to look for fights and focus on your future. Thaddeus's grandfather was standing by a bus station as Thaddeus leaned against the window at the last row of seats, bidding his farewell. Only a few people were gathered around him. I'll be back when I have time. By the way, grandfather, you can call me once a week and update me on your medical condition. But before Thaddeus's words could finish, the bus emitted an unpleasant sound from its engine and sped away. I won't call you. Take care of your money and don't spend it on girlfriends. Thaddeus's grandfather turned around with a smile on his wrinkled face, hoping to see his grandson smile genuinely. Initially, he didn't want to see his grandson when he was born, as he disagreed with his daughter's relationship with a foreign man. However, after the car accident that claimed his daughter's life, he became the only family Thaddeus had left, and he took it upon himself to care for him. After the accident, taking care of his grandson was not a problem at all. Thaddeus was a very intelligent young man who seemed to understand his situation perfectly. That was strange, but his grandfather never asked about it. Boss, is he crying? A worker who accompanied Thaddeus and his grandfather was shocked to see the old man shedding tears. Ahem, it's fine. This is the end of the farewell ceremony. Let's all go back to work. Thaddeus's grandfather wiped his tears and without saying much more, he walked back to his car, which was not far away. Name, Thaddeus Sato. General Attributes. Strength, level 6956-1100. Speed, level 71150-1300. Endurance, level 5808-900. Spirit, level 81360-1700. Zanjutsu skill, sword art level 20-300. Hakuta skill, hand-to-hand -hand combat level 2250-500. Hoho skill, movement and speed level 4790-900. Kita skill, magic level 00-100. Zanpakito name, Ryajinjaka. Zanpakito type, fire Zanpakito. Shikai release skill, the Shikai ability of Ryajinjaka is called Anetsujigoku, Inferno of Flames. When activated, the flames of Ryajinjaka intensify and engulf the surrounding area. These flames are extremely hot and practically indestructible, capable of burning anything they touch. Furthermore, the heat generated by the flames is enough to melt steel and reduce it to ashes. Skills once Shikai is released, ability, Jokaku Injo, Blazing Fortress, level, 00-100 Description, the flames of Ryajinjaka create a gigantic wall of fire, which is used to keep one or several targets captive at the same time for an unspecified period. Ability, Teimatsu, Torch, level, 20-500 Description, this ability can create a great inferno with a simple movement of Ryajinjaka. The fire generated by the attack consumes everything that is caught within the flames until nothing remains but ashes. The flames created by Ryajinjaka can be controlled with great precision by Yamamoto to attack only the targets he chooses and also has power over the intensity of the flames. Ability, Enetsu Jigoku, Flames of Hell, level, 30-700 Description, this technique consists of releasing gigantic columns of fire over a specific area. The purpose of Enetsu Jigoku is to enclose the target within that hell to destroy it completely, even if it means immolating the attacker, the victim, and everything within the technique's perimeter. Shikai Skill Level, level 40-900 Bankai Release Skill, the Bankai of Ryajinjaka is called Zenka no Tachi, Calcinator's Sun Strike. With this final release, Yamamoto unleashes the true destructive power of his Zenpakito. The Bankai envelopes his sword in even more intense flames and creates a fiery aura around his body. In this state, Yamamoto can freely control and manipulate fire, allowing him to launch powerful and devastating attacks. Bankai Skill Level, level 0 slash sealed. Cursed Level. Cursed Level Description, level 2 300 slash 500. Additional abilities or powers obtained in the Cursed Level, 0. Souls sent to Eternal Rest, 1200 souls. Cursed Spirit Souls, 74. Soul Points, 0. Not bad. 
Thaddeus tilted his head and leaned against the window, closing his eyes as he watched the sunset, pondering about many things at once. There were very few people on this bus, and besides the driver, only two others were present, making it very spacious. The rice fields along the path were exceptionally green, and they all passed under Thaddeus's gaze. He looked at his student documents in his hand, containing all his information. It was supposed to get him accepted into the new school. His face reflected in the window's mirror, and only now did Thaddeus pay attention to his appearance. He had an imposing and attractive young face. His features were well-defined and masculine, emphasizing his masculinity. His angular and marked facial features, with a square jaw and slightly arched eyebrows, added a touch of mystery to his gaze. The most notable aspect of his appearance is his eyes, which reflect an intensity and seriousness of his soul. They have a profound and penetrating expression, as if carrying a considerable emotional burden. This gaze, known as dead eyes, conveys a sense of determination and resolution, but also conceals hidden pain or suffering. His hair is carefully groomed, but with a touch of messiness and rebellion. Its color is dark, and the strands fall framing his face, accentuating his attractiveness and giving him an air of rebelliousness. He truly doesn't care much about the appearance of his face, after all, most likely, he will be somehow damaged by the cursed spirits later on. Sugisawa High School. That's the high school he is being transferred to, and it's located on the outskirts of the city. Since it's far away, he needs an apartment to stay, and because this area is outside the city, the rent is really cheap. Suddenly, Thaddeus thought that this time he would have the opportunity to experience new sensations. In such a vast world with secrets unknown to humanity, it might be a chance to relieve some of the dormant feelings from his past life. Regarding his current strength, he was strong and believed that he could confidently face a first-grade cursed spirit and come out alive even against a special grade one. Well, those are his thoughts, and although they are from his inexperience, he was really sure that all his released power was enough to protect his life. He would eliminate the most powerful cursed spirits he encountered and erase the soul marks from all the places he visited in the future. With a beautiful vision in mind, Thaddeus fell asleep, sleeping deeply and sweetly for the rest of the journey. The people in the front seats didn't pay attention to the young man sitting alone in the back, holding a wooden staff, so the bus quietly advanced all the way. Passengers, we have arrived at our final destination. The middle-aged driver made his usual announcement, and Thaddeus woke up. He looked at the darkness outside the bus window, and then around him, there were large and small houses in view. It seems like I arrived in Sendai City, exactly in Miyagi Prefecture. Thaddeus stretched, stored the documents in his backpack, and took his staff that served as support for a cloth bag. As he walked towards the bus door, he thanked the driver and got off. When he arrived here, everything was on his own, and his grandfather only supervised his residence and school transfer. So, the first thing to deal with next is my hunger. Thaddeus licked his lips. Since he lived with his grandfather, he was notoriously very gluttonous. Japanese food consists of a lot of vegetables and fish, so it was really a light meal on most occasions. But here, he could enjoy the food he liked most without being bothered. For a boy of almost 16, it was indeed an exaggeration what he ate at home. However, Thaddeus never wanted to hide that and certainly was a very straightforward person. He wasn't ashamed of silly situations, and most of the time, he expressed what he thought. After walking a dozen meters and checking the map on his cell phone, he knew there was a noodle restaurant nearby. However, just as he was crossing a street, he saw a stall run by an old man selling noodles. I'll definitely have dinner at that place, the elderly have a knack for making noodles. Thaddeus smiled and, with small jumps, headed towards that food stall. After arriving at that stall, he looked at the elderly man who was talking to a man with a camera and said to the owner of the place, Sir, I want three bowls of noodles. All right, you can find a seat for yourself, and the food will be ready in no time. The owner of this place didn't even bother to look up. This place was a small cart, there was a table with four chairs on one side, and there was a place to sit also just in front of the cart, so Thaddeus sat right in front of the cart. Just that after looking at each other in silence for a long time, the elderly man looked up and saw Thaddeus sitting silently while a foreigner was recording a video of the food. Looking around, there was no one else, so it felt really strange, but he didn't say anything. Will this boy eat three bowls alone? No, no, maybe he won't be able to finish them. Maybe his parents or friends will come soon, that must be it. The owner thought this, and it was certainly likely, it happened often. So soon plates of noodles appeared in front of Thaddeus. It wasn't until Thaddeus finished one bowl after another alone that he gained the attention of the restaurant owner and the foreigner who was recording the food. Was all that food really for him alone? This appetite. Certainly, it was an overwhelming amount of food. To be honest, the last person who ate so much in this place only finished two bowls of noodles. But Thaddeus didn't mind and continued eating. After finishing, he paid the bill and, taking his things, left. After being a little far away, his instincts made him burp naturally. This kid. The elderly man shook his head as he saw Thaddeus leave his place with a satisfied smile. Who knows? Maybe his technique improved so much that people can't eat only one bowl. The foreigner who had finished recording asked the restaurant owner, Do Japanese people normally eat that much food? It's not normal. By the way, what are you recording for? Mark Wines, you can see my content right on the red platform. Thaddeus was full, those bowls of noodles were really generous, and the taste was excellent. This time he would spend the night in a one-night capsule, or maybe he would decide to stay at a cyber cafe. Japanese cyber cafes are both cyber cafes and hotels. There is a wide range of things here, and there is no difference from conventional hotels. For students, these conditions are better because of the low costs. Separate room, large screen, clean bathroom, complete toiletries, microwave, washing machine, refrigerator, and even a shower. If it weren't for Thaddeus, who was very stingy and wanted to take care of his money, he could live in these kinds of places for a longer period. The things in this place perfectly fulfilled his needs. However, Sendai City in Miyagi Prefecture is just a small city, and renting a house is still more cost-effective than a cyber cafe or a capsule hotel. Therefore, tonight he might experience a Japanese cyber cafe that he had never experienced in his previous life. As for his apartment, tomorrow he had a meeting with the landlord to get the keys to the apartment he had reserved if everything was fine. Creator's Thoughts S.R. Cuervo You can read more chapters on my Patreon, S.R. Cuervo Chapter 4, A Different Way of Greeting 
Tonight, Thaddeus slept like a small child, and the effect of the capsule rooms with their soundproofing was truly comfortable. Besides, people in this type of place respected silence a lot. It didn't matter that Thaddeus was only 14 years old right now, his height and more developed features were enough to go unnoticed. Besides, in this place, there were students of all ages, so staying in such accommodations was common. Still, who could grow so much at 14 or 15 years old? 8. Perhaps his height was around 1.85 meters at the age of 14. Thaddeus thought that his height was quite tall considering he was still growing, and most likely, he would reach 1.90 meters, something quite considerable and troublesome when thinking about Japanese houses that are not designed for such tall people. 5. Thaddeus spent half a day looking for the vacant apartment he had reserved, but due to many things catching his attention, he got distracted numerous times. He soon arrived at the place where he would rent the apartment. The rental price was low since it was close to a company that generated certain noises that could be annoying to some people. 1. But according to the landlord's words, that wasn't the real reason why this place had lost tenants. The main reason was that this large company near the apartments had experienced some extraordinary events before, which caused many residents in the vicinity to leave their homes. Only after rents here had decreased in recent months did the number of residents slightly increase. For Thaddeus, like others, supernatural incidents didn't matter. In fact, he would take care of all supernatural incidents in this place, and if there was a problem, it most likely had something to do with cursed spirits, and he would take care of cleansing the area. 2. After receiving the money from Thaddeus, the landlord simply said a few words about not going out at night since he was a student, and then quickly left, apparently afraid that Thaddeus might change his mind about staying in this place. Thaddeus felt strange seeing the back of his landlord rushing away like that. Was I scammed, or is this place not peaceful at all? Who would have thought that I'm now dealing with the paranormal? It doesn't matter, this will be my home until the time comes to go to the real school that will teach me what I want to learn. Thaddeus looked at the building divided into two apartments and became interested in the other tenant. That person must be quite characterful since he lived here before him. Would he be a brave person or a retired father? 1. Well, I'll just greet him and introduce myself as his neighbor. It would be troublesome if someone stole something from me in this place, so it's better to be in touch. Bum, bum, bum. Thaddeus knocked on his neighbor's door and suddenly remembered that today was Monday, and since they were workers or students, they should be out. So, for now, Thaddeus entered his apartment. The small room wasn't too big or too small, over 40 square meters, enough for one person to live in, with a living room, bedroom, bathroom, and a small kitchen. Japanese architecture is designed to make the most of every little space, so everything looks very clean and tidy. Thaddeus was impressed that the place was so clean. Therefore, he only organized his belongings, which weren't many, and left the rest aside as he went out with his wooden staff, which was the sealed form of his sword. Transportation here in the city of Sendai is more convenient and intuitive. Compared to the crematorium outside the suburbs of Tokyo where Thaddeus spent a long time after his temporary suspension, it is much more accessible. Although this place has a lot of countryside, everything is very well integrated, providing a sense of freedom. Of course, Miyagi Prefecture is relatively well developed, but it must also be considered that where he lived before, there was nothing to work with. 1. After Thaddeus bought daily necessities and groceries at a large supermarket, he returned to his home. On the way, people often looked at him with strange eyes. It wasn't because he was new to living here, but because he carried large and small bags in large quantities, so many that Thaddeus's body was almost completely covered. Although he is tall, in the eyes of others, he shouldn't be carrying so many bags, but for him, it only required a bit of effort. It's more convenient to buy everything at once to be able to eat for at least two weeks. He doesn't like going back and forth several times with bags, so even though it looks strange, he prefers to carry everything at once. 5. After walking relatively fast without stopping until he reached his apartment, Thaddeus put all the food into the empty refrigerator. As there were pans here, he could cook later. It was never too late to go out and try the local food when he had money. But this way of spending money made Thaddeus feel a sense of discomfort he didn't want. Thaddeus, who was watching TV, wanted to go out and visit that strange company to see if he found anything unusual, but after thinking about it, he wanted to review his true strength. Currently, he could release his Shikai without any problems, and due to being at level 4, he was confident that he could have some control over his flames without any rush. Besides, he had great abilities that he could use with his sword's flames. If all the cursed spirits within hundreds of meters were to touch his flames, most likely they would be reduced to ashes. But there is a big problem. Attracting attention. The moment I release my Shikai, not only the shamans in the vicinity would notice, but also spirits of special grade, which I'm not entirely sure I could face and come out unscathed. Besides, I don't know how powerful my flames are and to what extent my strength reaches in this world. Thaddeus knows he is strong, but he doesn't know how strong. 5. If his strength is fully released and he attacks his enemies, collateral damage is something he wouldn't be able to control with his level 4 Shikai. And if his sword's flames were to not damage the cursed spirits, he would have to fight hand to hand, and his abilities in that area are not good right now. However, this concern has been replaced by his normal state of his sword. It was truly a cursed level weapon in its normal state, its sharpness and endurance are unimaginable. First of all, that sword with the purple hilt is a powerful weapon, no one could imagine the power it could unleash if he were to obtain its full power. With just his Shikai, Thaddeus believes he would cause trouble for the entire city, and the attention he would receive would be all-encompassing. So, until he has a method to conceal the battles he participates in, fully releasing all the flames of his sword under his control is really risky. 3. Regarding hand-to-hand -hand combat, although the martial art he practices is unparalleled for fighting against cursed spirits, it is only at level 2, so he needs to practice and train a lot to naturally improve since he has no soul points to use at the moment. Additionally, the damage he can receive, although incredibly significant, requires both cursed energy and soul for healing, so engaging in a battle with the risk of sustaining much damage is not safe. 4. True, he could increase his stats through natural training. That's what he does, apart from killing cursed spirits and guiding souls in the crematorium, he spends most of his time training, and the result of that has given him abnormal stats. 
In summary, as long as he doesn't encounter a fully conditioned grade 1 cursed spirit or a special grade cursed spirit, he is very confident he can win. This world is not only about protecting himself against the most powerful cursed spirits but also against evil jujitsu sorcerers and some cursed objects that could cause serious trouble. If he encounters any of these people, it is really complicated for him to come out unscathed. Therefore, Thaddeus will try to keep a low profile, and it's better not to be too arrogant too soon before he becomes skilled enough that he doesn't have to hide from anyone, to avoid being caught by a powerful enemy and causing his death. Well, of course, there's a Ryuman Sukuna container like Itadori Yuji on the positive side of his future, and most of the evil forces will be drawn to him, which will reduce the attention directed at him. 5. Apart from Itadori, there's also a superior human like Gojo Satoru. Most of the evil forces are figuring out how to deal with that powerful being. By the time it comes, will they be able to handle Thaddeus? After analyzing his situation, Thaddeus felt very relieved. He didn't need to deliberately please anyone, and he didn't need to deliberately avoid anyone, just follow the trajectory of this world and fulfill his responsibility as an eliminator of evil that crosses his path. As for the unexpected changes that will occur in the future, he will deal with them intelligently at that time. In summary, the world is full of unknowns, and the unknown has the motivation to interact with special people. Tap tap, tap tap, am I already back, neighbor? Thaddeus' ears were very sensitive, and he heard someone coming up the stairs. At this moment, the sky was already dark, and it was evening before he realized. 1. After hearing the sound of climbing the stairs, Thaddeus decided to go out and take a look at who this brave neighbor is. Soon, the sound of footsteps appeared on the upper floor, and Thaddeus pretended to descend the stairs and finally saw this mysterious neighbor. Is it actually a woman? 1. Thaddeus was stunned for a moment, with one foot still on the stairs, just looking at the girl coming up from below with an indescribable expression on his face. But there was something even more curious that left him petrified, and that is that he felt like he knew the person coming up the stairs. Yes, this girl standing in front of him can indeed be called a girl. She's no older than two years younger than Thaddeus, about 160 centimeters tall, wearing a dark blue dress that suits her well, but the most eye-catching thing is her orange hair and delicate face. 19. Who does this woman seem to be? Thaddeus had an impression, but suddenly he couldn't remember her clearly, especially after seeing her so unexpectedly, which made the situation feel a bit unreal. The girl named Kujisaki Nobara had noticed the guy in the distance for a long time, but now that Thaddeus was staring directly at her, she furrowed her brows. 7. Is this guy a stalker? Nobara thought to herself but looked away from Thaddeus. Although she had lived in this house for a while, she knew that no one would come to live here because of the special conditions around it. Cheap rent is one thing, but no matter how cheap the rent is, not many people will come to live here, and she lives here for the sake of peace and the comfort of her mind, and, by the way, to take care of her personal affairs. What motives does the guy in front of her have? Could it be that he's here for her? 4. Is he intentionally stalking her? Nobara furrowed her brows and walked step by step, her right hand already clenched into a fist, as long as this young man with his active hormones dared to make a move, she would hit him straight in the nose. 1. Creator's Thoughts. S.R. Cuervo. You can read more chapters on my Patreon, S.R. Cuervo. Chapter 5, The Likes of Thaddeus. Is she my neighbor? Thaddeus would find out just at this moment, although it's obvious that she's the neighbor who lives right next door. How should he greet her? Should he be friendly or serious? This was the first time he found himself in a dilemma about a normal conversation, so Thaddeus simply introduced himself as he would to anyone else, first extending his hand and then greeting her. Hello. Thaddeus' hand moved faster than his words, and an unnatural smile formed on his face. She's messing with the wrong person. Nobara clenched her fist tightly and aimed for Thaddeus' face. Although Thaddeus didn't expect such an intense reaction from her, let alone that she would respond that way, he moved his fist closer to his face, and his instincts kicked in, but at the last moment, he held back and only avoided the punch heading towards his head. 6. Boom. With a muffled sound, Nobara's fist hit the wall, and the wall cracked in a small area around the impact of the punch. Before she could launch another attack, Thaddeus, who didn't want any misunderstanding right now, immediately shouted. I'm just a new neighbor who just moved in here. I thought it would be courteous to greet you. I'm not some kind of stalker. His hands covered his face, but his senses were alert to avoid any other attack if necessary. 3. You are not a stalker. Nobara realized that might be the case and smiled a little embarrassedly after retracting her fist. She had acted impulsively due to everything that had happened to her in the last few days, so she didn't strike again. Furthermore, Thaddeus' expression wasn't exactly what those types of stalkers usually wear, and most importantly, he now seemed to be just greeting her. Of course, how could I be a stalker? Do stalkers nowadays greet you and extend their hand to introduce themselves? Thaddeus, after processing the situation, got a bit upset, but he held back. After all, this was partly his fault. But more importantly, isn't this girl Kujisaki Nobara, the first year jiu-jitsu schoolgirl from the future? 2. As expected of her temperament, things wouldn't go well if she were truly angry. Looking back at the extent of the damage to the wall, if it weren't for Thaddeus being able to dodge that hit, someone else would have suffered serious injuries. Thinking about this, Thaddeus was a bit discouraged about getting to know this familiar girl more closely. I'm sorry, someone has been following me lately. Forgive me for being so aggressive, I'm now very embarrassed about my behavior. She acted very impulsively just now, but was it too much to scare the guy in front of her? 5. The mark of Nobara's fist on the wall was clearly visible and hard to ignore, demonstrating the force with which she had attacked. Thaddeus realized that Nobara's appearance was different. Although she had long hair and that distinct vibe, with her personality, very few people should follow her, right? Only there are strange people in the world. Besides, the real Nobara should be in a different place, right? How could she be here? The girl standing before him had no traces of cursed energy, at least that's what Thaddeus felt, but he wasn't interested in investigating. Well, I guess it's not that serious after all. I'm not hurt either way. By the way, my name is Thaddeus, I'm your new neighbor. 
Thaddeus extended his hand rigidly and a bit uncomfortable with this situation. Kujisaki Nobara. Nobara also extended her hand and shook Thaddeus' hand briefly. Only now did she realize that the guy in front of her was very tall. I moved in today, I'm a student, so I might not be home very often. After the initial awkwardness, the two smiled at each other, Thaddeus wanting to avoid any more uncomfortable silence under the stairs. This simple conversation could be considered an initial connection. I didn't expect the neighbor to be so aggressive. Thaddeus muttered quietly, but Nobara heard him. That was embarrassing. Nobara tied her orange hair when she got home, put down her bag, and washed her face with cold water to calm herself down. Too. It wasn't until this moment that Nobara realized something was wrong. Although she restrained her strength in that punch just now, it wasn't easy for a teenager to dodge it. But, in fact, Thaddeus easily avoided the punch, which is very unusual, and Nobara felt that this young man didn't have cursed power in his body. It's impossible for him to be a jiu-jitsu master. Maybe he only practiced some self-defense skills or something? 3. He's a brave guy, I wouldn't dare to live in this place if I were him. Nobara looked outside the building through the window briefly. 1. Thaddeus went downstairs just to avoid suspicion about why he left his apartment in the first place. Otherwise, he might really be considered a stalker. In fact, didn't he just harass his neighbor? 7. After walking for a few minutes, he arrived at the place where supposed paranormal things were happening. He didn't bring his sword with him, so that's a downside he needs to fix. His sword should be his other limb. He could explore more later, but with Nobara existing as his neighbor, that's difficult to do. It's something that shouldn't happen, or maybe he's really confused, and that Nobara isn't the one he knows. Coming to this world, he had some knowledge about the occult and everything, which he started receiving true information about at the age of 10. His knowledge isn't extensive because, as a university student, he barely had time for himself to study and get good grades. Now he regrets not making better use of his time when he had the opportunity. Before he knew it, Thaddeus had returned to the apartment building. This building has five floors, each with six rooms. Thaddeus lives on the fifth floor, and Nobara on the fourth. Considering the surrounding environment and the spiritual events keeping people away, he was Nobara's only neighbor, which made her feel uncomfortable. Two. However, Nobara's reaction was too big, and Thaddeus was the one who was impressed by the punch he received from a girl just for wanting to say hello. Well, let's build a good relationship with her first, after all, we might have to work together in the future if she's the one I know. Thaddeus smiled, took off his clothes, and went to the bathroom to take a shower. Nobara, living below, could hear Thaddeus opening his apartment door. After closing the jiu-jitsu book, she gritted her teeth, I have to leave this place at some point. The next day, Thaddeus had a tough Hakuta training session, engaging in intensive muscle activity every morning. With this, he not only increased his endurance, speed, strength, and fighting style, but also his experience and growth. According to his understanding, this would eventually give him a close-range combat level on PAR with Yamamoto at some point in his life, so he trained hard every morning to endure and embrace the process. 6. His attribute panel allowed him to increase all his stats, but Thaddeus knows he mustn't waste time, and as long as he doesn't have soul points, he can always improve his general stats whenever he trains. In these days, Thaddeus doesn't have to attend school, so he exercises all day from morning till night. Besides exercising, he visits cemeteries and crematories in the vicinity. Yes, he knows, it's all very disturbing, but it helps him become stronger. Usually, he can meet Nobara during the day and night, but the two don't communicate much, they only greet each other. Nobara's impression and understanding of Thaddeus had improved a lot lately. Originally, she thought Thaddeus was an otaku who loved dark places, but it was the opposite. She saw Thaddeus running and training in some peculiar martial art from morning till night, and when she learned about his continuous training, she understood why this young man could dodge her punch. But after a while, Nobara decided to leave here and did so after handling her affairs. After all, her goals and vision were not in such a small and hidden city. Time passed quickly, half a month passed in an instant, and today, Thaddeus carried a shoulder bag to Sugisawa Main High School. Coincidentally, the class assigned to Thaddeus was right next to Itatari, not the same class but very close. 4. Before today's class, I'd like to welcome the new classmate, why don't you come in and introduce yourself to your new classmates? The teacher smiled at Thaddeus at the classroom door. As soon as Thaddeus entered the class, some of the girls covered their mouths, while others exclaimed, So tall. Hmm, his eyes are scary. He seems older than us. I don't think so, he should be the same age as us. How can he develop so well? 1. You can be more reserved, you, the one munching on snacks, it's obviously from eating too much meat, right? The girls whispered, obviously curious and attentively awaiting Thaddeus' introduction. The boys seemed to have encountered an old enemy, but some really didn't care, Thaddeus could be their general, and this wasn't the Middle Ages where you could have four wives and ten concubines. 10. Stop talking nonsense, is being a little taller that big of a deal? What's the use of being so tall? You see, he almost hit his head on the classroom door just now, isn't that ridiculous? Maybe his height isn't the only thing that's long. 31. Wait, what did you just say? Nothing, I'm a man who admires the beauty of others, I certainly respect myself. 1. All right, everyone, quiet down, let the new classmate introduce himself first. The teacher raised her hand to signal everyone to be quiet. The new classmate is tall and handsome, and as a teacher, she can understand all the commotion it causes. Thaddeus could hear clearly what his classmates were saying. He didn't have this height and appearance in his previous life, so very few people in his class would talk about it, but not only was he not upset, why would he enjoy it? Hello, everyone, my name is Thaddeus, you can just call me that. I'm from the rural areas of Tokyo, and my height is so tall because my father isn't Japanese. I like to exercise, listen to music, and visit cemeteries. You will receive the same treatment from me as I receive from you. Thank you, and sorry for taking up so much of your time. 7. Hey, Itadori, did you hear the commotion in the class next door? A young man near the door shouted to his friend. Of course, I heard it, seems like a welcome ceremony for transferred students. Itadori, from the adjacent class, tilted his head and dragged his chin with one hand. He had seen that first-year student in the school before. He was quite tall. Although he looked normal, he seemed to give Itadori a slightly different feeling. 1. 
Creator's Thoughts, SR Cuervo. You can read more chapters on my Patreon, SR Cuervo. Chapter 6, maybe in the future. Do you like cemeteries? Was that what he said? Seeing that things were getting awkward, Thaddeus clarified with a distorted smile. I like solitary places like cemeteries. I usually find my inner self in those kinds of places. 10. Well, Thaddeus, you can sit with your classmates in any of the empty seats. Well, he had done the best he could in this uncomfortable introduction. But his straightforward way of being had once again betrayed him. So with a slight slip of the tongue corrected, he looked at the expressions of those who showed little interest in continuing to observe him. After the introduction, Thaddeus sat next to a classmate. The classmate seemed a bit uncomfortable, uneasy about the sudden wave of gazes on her. Um, my name is Thaddeus, may I know yours? Ah, uh, are you, talking to me? The classmate turned her head and immediately looked at Thaddeus, not sure how to address this rough-looking young man. Haha, <laughs> yes. Thaddeus smiled even more uncomfortably, remembering how tiresome interactions in schools were. Oh, my name is Yusajai Tasko. I hope we can get along. Yusajai introduced herself immediately and, after speaking, turned and looked to the front of the class, as if not interested in talking to Thaddeus. 1. Hey, hey, have you seen that? Yusajai, the ice queen, actually talking normally with the new guy, who would have thought, the time I introduced myself to her, she completely ignored me. She seems like a very different girl than the one we know, and it seems like she doesn't completely dislike that new guy. At this moment, the two boys who were talking about Yusajai suddenly felt a chill run down their bodies, as if they were being observed by a sharp gaze. 3. It's over, don't turn your head, I don't want to see her face. Thaddeus could notice that Yusajai, as a student, was cold towards others and certainly gave off that vibe, but her attitude towards others had nothing to do with him. Although Yusajai was pretty, he wasn't interested in having a romantic relationship with someone ordinary. At least, if Thaddeus were to fall in love with someone, she should be strong enough to face a grade 1 demon on her own and come out victorious. He did this because he might become one of the brightest targets in the future, and all that attention could lead to cursed spirits attacking his loved ones. 13. But that was thinking ahead, as he had been very distant from such feelings until now. Not to mention that his goal now was to become much stronger and improve day by day. 1. The class was very interactive all the time, which made all the students listen attentively and allowed some of the lazier ones to daydream. After school, Thaddeus didn't communicate much with his classmates and went home alone after visiting some nearby cemeteries as his daily routine. A few days later, the students established Thaddeus' personal image as a less talkative, cold, and distant representative who always carried some kind of cane with him. People are curious, especially young people, so he had to explain to them that he occasionally lost his balance, and the cane served as support to avoid falling to the ground. As a result, Thaddeus was avoided much more by male classmates, who seemed uninterested in establishing communication. But the problem with all of this was that female classmates liked these types of stereotypes and continued to talk to him. So, this point really annoyed Thaddeus. He just wanted to erase all traces of soul in this place and take advantage of the opportunities available here to keep improving. If this were heard by the previous Thaddeus, he would definitely slap him. His desire was to fall in love, feel love, and give a kiss. However, the current Thaddeus was much more mature and didn't want to get into a relationship just to satisfy his past desires, as women weren't objects for him to play with. 12. Of course, now he had requirements to think about something more than just friends, but that was something distant. You have eliminated all soul points in this place, your transcendence has been supervised by your presence. You have obtained 45 soul points. Thaddeus couldn't see the souls that still had a presence in the world of the living, but he could feel the coldness running through his body and hear some whispers of the deceased's last wishes. During all this time, the most complicated thing was seeing a corpse, which was just an empty shell without a soul and essence. When someone dies, they leave their body behind, and the soul travels to a completely different place. As long as the deceased person is someone close to you, you know that they are no longer your loved one and have completely disappeared. Thaddeus felt this when his best friend died saving him from an event he didn't want to remember. 3. But he could see his friend's corpse, resting in silence, knowing that it was no longer his friend. His friend, who gave life and essence to the corpse, had completely disappeared. The living are the ones who suffer, and the dead vanish. May all these souls rest in peace. Thaddeus didn't smile easily, as everything in his life was really dark. He was alone in the first place, and the only thing that kept him active was being the guardian of souls and destroyer of cursed spirits in this world. He wanted to eliminate them all, at least the strongest ones. A week later, Thaddeus, who returned home as fast as he could after visiting places where he could gain benefits while bidding farewell to all those souls, discovered that his neighbor Nobera, whom he saw often, was no longer at home. They would definitely cross paths at some point during the day, but she didn't appear on this day. Who? 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 Thaddeus trained until late, with some tires tied to his back with metal chains, deliberately waiting until late to verify his supposition. Now, he couldn't help but wonder if something had happened to her. What Nobera does in general isn't something that Thaddeus really cares about, but if she is the Nobera he remembers, she should be doing something related either to her interests or cursed spirits, and no one in the world could bother her since she had a character that wouldn't be intimidated. 2. At the end, after midnight, Thaddeus entered his house and ate the first thing he found before taking a shower. Even if Nobera was in trouble, he couldn't go where she was, and if he traveled all over the city at full speed, he might encounter problems or complications on the way, so he couldn't help. Besides, the most important thing was that Thaddeus believed in Nobera and knew she wasn't weak. His dinner was very simple, some bread with honey and others with ham, large amounts of water, and an uncut sushi roll. The appearance didn't matter much to Thaddeus, as long as it was food that could satisfy his appetite, he would eat it, even if the meals were sometimes very boring. In the past two weeks, he had improved his hand-to-hand -hand combat and swordsmanship, so all the intensive training he did was yielding good results. Additionally, the places he visited were helping him progress even faster. After eating, Thaddeus washed the dishes and forks. He looked at the time and continued to feel uneasy because Nobara hadn't returned. Normally, she should already be home at this hour, but she wasn't here. 
Come on, Thaddeus, just take a look at her apartment. Although he knew Nobera wasn't home, he wanted to check something before touring the whole city. After leaving his apartment in sportswear and with his sword ceiling staff, he put on a half-mouth mask and arrived at Nobera's apartment. This time, paying more attention, Thaddeus discovered a small note hidden under the door, obviously not something someone had left since no one came to this place. Taking the note, he could clearly read a handwritten letter. Neighbor, if you're reading this, it means you are kind enough to care. I'm leaving the city, so thank you. Thaddeus looked at those words and felt relieved that she was not in trouble. But this was strange, she just left without saying anything? How rude, leaving without saying goodbye in person. It had been no more than a month since he came here, and Nobera hadn't formed such a deep connection with him since they didn't see each other much. Although they bumped into each other on shopping days, he helped her, but it wasn't that much. He also occasionally helped her receive packages from couriers since they didn't want to stay here for long. 4. Although their relationship was basic neighborly, this letter showed that their connection was better than mere strangers, but that was it. Nobera eventually left without saying a word, which was rude, but she also didn't have an obligation to bid farewell or for Thaddeus to be bothered. Do you really think we won't meet again? Haha, <laughs> maybe next time we can be friends. Thaddeus kept a note and returned to his apartment, slightly annoyed that he had worried for nothing. A few days ago, she had promised to treat him to a meal for all the help she received from him, but she disappeared without a word. Although Thaddeus didn't have exes, he felt that this was much worse than ending a relationship. 11. At this moment, Nobera was sitting on the high-speed train, looking at the city at night, with a slightly raised mouth. After taking care of her business in this place, she would go home to pack her things as soon as possible and then go to the city she longed for, her homeland and the place where she wanted to live. The city of her dreams had all kinds of things, good food, well-developed transportation centers, and all sorts of novelties. But after getting along with Thaddeus, who had quickly proved to be different from 98% of the guys she had encountered, she knew he was someone noble, but someone like him also hit a painful past. 9. However, that could be the possible end of their good relationship. After all, she had very ambitious goals, and someone like Thaddeus didn't seem to be heading in the same direction. Thaddeus, on the rooftop of the apartment building where he lived, holding the purple magic sword, looked at the bustling city and breathed a sigh of relief. In the end, it didn't matter whether she said goodbye or not, what really mattered was that she was safe. 10. The following days continued as usual. Thaddeus discovered new methods to intensify his training and visited places much farther on his days off, eliminating traces of souls, making him even stronger. As for school, Thaddeus and Itattery were getting along fine, but communication was minimal, though they had a good vibe, which could be considered acquaintances with no issues. It's not that Thaddeus didn't want to have a good relationship with Itattery, but right now, he didn't want to get too close to him. He didn't want to change the original direction of the world due to his intervention, as he needed to benefit from it. 1. Although it was possible that after he came to this world, the direction of this world changed, and things in the future might change rapidly, generating completely different scenarios, by then, it wouldn't matter anymore. But in the initial stages, it did matter, and that's precisely why Thaddeus had to maintain a certain distance, especially with Itattery. If Itattery couldn't eat Ryaman Sukuna's fingers due to his intervention, then a series of chain reactions wouldn't occur. 5. Thaddeus's purpose was for Itattery to stay in the front line, a container for a powerful special grade cursed spirit, so that the attention drawn to him would be considerably reduced. If Thaddeus's strength wasn't exposed too much, he could gain a significant advantage against stronger enemies, and before he considered himself powerful enough, he needed Itattery to act as a huge shield. 1. It may sound like using Itattery as a shield, but Thaddeus would only let things proceed more or less as they should, but he wouldn't let anyone die just because of his simple desires. Even if Ryaman Sukuna gained physical control of Itattery in the future, he would help Itattery regain control of his body. Even if he fought Sukuna at all costs, Thaddeus believed that in the future, his strength would be enough to face special grade cursed spirits, so he wouldn't fear someone like Sukuna. 8. If he could use his Bankai at its full power, he believed that no one on earth could rival him. Moreover, if he ever wanted to, he could create his own domain of fire. In that case, there would be no one on earth capable of withstanding the heat of his sword and his most powerful techniques. 24. Creator's Thoughts. S.R. Cuervo. You can read more chapters on my Patreon, S.R. Cuervo. Chapter 7, A Gloomy Day. Have you lost a loved one? A voice asked from behind Thaddeus, who was sitting on a bench in a cemetery. 2. Huh? Well, these places can sometimes be the safest places, replied Thaddeus. His words caught the attention of an elderly woman, and she said, My son took his own life a few months ago. Believe me, life will treat you well if you just keep persevering. 2. Thaddeus stood up from the bench, looked at the woman, and said, Thank you for the advice, I'll keep that in mind. 5. For some strange reason, he felt depressed and wanted to leave this place as soon as possible. The last thing a mother should witness is the loss of a child, they don't deserve something like that. But sometimes, Thaddeus knows that there are no easy ways out or help. A few weeks later, during a club activity, Thaddeus seemed inactive as he didn't join any club. However, since he hadn't joined any club, many people approached him to join theirs, making Thaddeus feel increasingly tired. The same thing happened during previous special club activities. Even though he didn't join any club, many people came to invite him with great proposals. 2. Perhaps he was slightly interested, but the clubs that came to invite him were all about strange themes, whether observation, social contact meetings, smiling club, and some more ordinary ones like athletics, vocal club, computer engineering club, and student union. 1. But Thaddeus didn't want to join any club, so today he avoided all those people and walked alone through the school, taking a less crowded path. 1. It's about to start. Are you ready? Thaddeus heard a voice coming from a nearby door. Wasn't this Itattery's voice? Sasaki, Iguki. All right, let's begin. We have to figure out which animal weaker than the president couldn't defeat. 4. Upon hearing this voice, Thaddeus was surprised and leaned against the wall. Wasn't this supposed to happen in the original storyline? It seems today is the day he was waiting for. 2. Considering this, he should stay at this school today to find out if all those events will occur. Although he wouldn't intervene, he would eliminate any cursed spirits near the school. Thaddeus, first year transfer student, since you don't participate in any club activities, what are you doing here alone? 
A flat and cold voice sounded behind Thaddeus. Thaddeus turned around, looked around, and smiled when he saw someone approaching. Oh, it turned out to be the student president. I was visiting the places that interested me the most, and he gave me a tour of the school. Although you're a first-year transfer student, I can't say much about you, but club activities are essential, so I hope you can participate in them. The student president didn't wait for Thaddeus to respond. After speaking, he pushed his glasses up his nose and walked towards the end of the hallway. 5. Seeing this young man, Thaddeus knew what would happen next because he had schemed through the papers in the student president's hands. He had heard about all the commotion in the occult club. Wanting some fresh air, Thaddeus grabbed his cane and walked towards the playground. As he passed by, he saw Megami with a white shirt, and he knew that everything was actually starting. Megami also glanced at Thaddeus at this moment. He looked at his body for a moment and then his cane, seeing that there was nothing special about him, and continued walking. He only noticed that he was relatively big for his age. 4. But after a careful observation, Megami felt strange for some reason and couldn't tell what was bothering him. After all, Thaddeus had no cursed energy in his body, so why was he paying attention to that guy? 22. After a few minutes, Megami looked away from Thaddeus and continued walking forward. He had to find the special grade cursed object as soon as possible, otherwise, very troublesome things would happen. Judging by the current situation, the cursed object seemed to have disappeared from this place. If he couldn't find it, it would be really difficult to estimate what would happen. Thaddeus didn't want to greet Megami, and after sensing cursed energy on the ground, he saw a grade 4 cursed spirit. However, with just a tap of his cane, he eliminated the spirit. After heading to the sports field, he found a place to sit and spent all his points on his fencing. After waiting for a while, he heard shouts not far from his position. 3. Come on, Takaji from the athletics club, and Itatari from the occult club are going to compete. Huh? What's the competition? Shot put, shot put. When the sound came out, many people nearby quickly ran to the open field, wanting to witness this wonderful competition. Takaji was already there, he twisted his neck and picked up a shot put on the ground, rubbing it in his palm before getting ready. Itatari, don't strain yourself. Eh. Takaji quickly pushed forward, and the shot immediately drew a parabola and landed in the grass. The surveyor quickly approached and said aloud, 14 meters. Ha ha, Takaji exclaimed excitedly. 14 meters is already a relatively good shooting score these days. It can be said that it is an extraordinary performance within his expectations. I think I went a bit overboard. Takaji looked confidently at Itatari, who stood aside with a simple expression. Takaji from the athletics club made a great shot, he probably already won. Itatari, can you do it? Itatari, Itatari, let's go. Itatari raised his eyebrows and walked to the position where Takaji was standing amid the noise of the surrounding students. After reaching out to pick up the metal ball, he asked Takaji, hey, can I throw it however I want? Sure, don't worry about fouls, you can throw it however you want. Takaji said with some arrogance, sorry, to show you how serious I am, I chose a discipline that isn't your strong point. Eh, boom, before Takaji's words could finish, everyone fell silent. Just as the coach was speaking, Itatari had already thrown the shot put, and the result exceeded everyone's imagination. Takaji was frozen, and his brain couldn't process what his eyes had seen. The surveyor trotted over and observed the shot put throw in the football sports harbor. He scratched his head and said, uh, about 30 meters. 30 meters. Yeah, I won. The surrounding students were surprised and speechless, all looking at Itatari as if he were a monster. Indeed, the rumors about him being a tiger were certainly true. Thaddeus, who was sitting on the side, felt quite astonished. Itatari could throw a shot put nearly 30 meters with his own power. It can be said that this kind of power is very frightening considering he's just a regular human, and his strength is quite impressive. No matter how conceited Thaddeus is, being an ordinary person, he would never have imagined surpassing Itatari, but now his strength might be even greater than Megami's own. Thaddeus stood up and patted the dust off himself. After glancing around, he went straight back to the classroom. Classes will be over in a while, and he isn't in a hurry to go home today because he has important things to take care of. Thaddeus, do you want to go home together? The bell ringing after class signifies that today's class is over and they can go home. Thaddeus looked at Usagi and smiled apologetically, I'm sorry, I have something to deal with today, so I can't go home with you? Oh, that's all right, then I'll go home first. Usagi grabbed her bag and walked out of the classroom. After leaving, her cold expression turned into one of embarrassment. In fact, Usagi has invited Thaddeus to walk home from school several times, mainly because she found out that her home is not far from where Thaddeus lives, and the route to school is very close as well. And the two of them have been walking home together after school in recent days, but Usagi felt that since they sat at the same table, they could naturally walk home together after school. After all, the way home is the same for both of them. But today, Thaddeus suddenly refused, and she inexplicably felt upset. Thaddeus didn't want to act this way either. He had originally planned to go home with her, but more important things would happen today, so there was no way he could go back. After Usagi left, the other classmates also left one after another. Thaddeus didn't go home either since no one would care about his absence. Creator's Thoughts SR Cuervo You can read more chapters on my Patreon, SR Cuervo. Chapter 8 The Shadow of What One Day I Will Be The sky gradually darkened, and the people still at the school were finishing up their affairs. It was only when the sky was completely dark that the school fell quiet and silent. Thaddeus, wearing sportswear, already knew who was here, he could sense them from hundreds of meters away. He knew he wasn't alone, as Sasaki and Iguki, two young enthusiasts of the occult and summonings who weren't afraid of death, were about to break Sukuna's finger seal tonight. 6. I hope I can learn and not get too involved, but it's also foolish to waste my only chance to enter the school of sorcery. Thaddeus sat silently in a classroom, and next to his chair was a table where a long sword rested silently. His sword, Ryajinjaka, might blaze tonight, as for the first time, it would be bathed in cursed spirit's blood. 4. At that same moment, in the building where the clubs were located, especially in the occultism room at the end of the hallway, a dim light emanated from the crystal on the door, the only light in the dark place. Sasaki and Aguka sat facing each other, and the candles on the table illuminated the small space around them, creating a dim and mysterious atmosphere. At this moment, Sasaki held an oval-shaped object wrapped in strange characters in her hands. It was clearly visible due to the candle's glow on the table. There were hidden eyes in the darkness, but it was evident that Sasaki and Aguka hadn't seen them. It can't be unwrapped. 
Sasaki found that the thing wrapped in paper wasn't as easy to unravel as she had hoped. It seemed to be stuck well enough to prevent it from opening. Seeing Sasaki's seriousness, Iguka said, was it necessary to come here in secret? Iguka had no special feelings about challenges or activities, and what they were doing today was nothing out of the ordinary, but that thing seemed well-crafted, so they would be greatly disappointed if it turned out to be nothing special. I'll turn on the lights. Iguka suddenly got up, ready to switch on the lights. At that moment, Sasaki interrupted him, no, don't ruin the atmosphere. Feeling the excitement is the essence of the occultism club. Besides, you know nothing will happen. Uh, all right. Iguka simply accepted this and didn't turn on the light. Oh, it came out. Sasaki's words made Iguka, who was seated, move closer to his friend. He wanted to see what was wrapped in the fabric. Sasaki started to be cautious. Although he knew nothing would happen, the atmosphere suddenly became more subtle, and she unconsciously swallowed saliva. Layer after layer, circle after circle, gradually, the strips of yellowish fabric became fewer and fewer, all piled up on the table. After finally unwrapping the object in her hands, there was a dark purple finger inside, and both of them were astonished. Is it a human finger? Could it be real? At that moment, Thaddeus quickly opened the door to the occultism club and told the two inside with an extremely cold voice, You two, run from this place. Six. Huh? Are you? Thaddeus. Both Sasaki and Iguki recognized this new transfer student. After all, since he arrived at the school, Thaddeus had been very popular because he had repeated a year. And the best part was that all that attention didn't affect him at all. At this moment, the candlelight on the table suddenly went out, and the next moment, a creepy gurgling sound was heard. What happened? Get out of here as fast as you can. Thaddeus grabbed Sasaki's and Iguka's clothes with both hands, and due to his incredible strength, the two fell outside the room. It hurts. Sasaki grabbed her shoulders. Just as he was about to ask Thaddeus why he did that, he saw countless hands and tentacles writhing in the dark room, rushing towards the outside. At this moment, Sasaki didn't know where he was in trouble. It seemed he was in big trouble, while Iguka leaned against the wall with trembling legs, unable to recover his movements for a while. 2. This is a world you shouldn't be connected to. If you two don't want to get hurt and ruin my chances of eliminating those things, you should leave this place and leave me alone. Thaddeus was calm, holding his sword in its scabbard with his right hand. Uh, um, Iguki and Sasaki didn't know what to say anymore. Their weak legs seemed stronger due to Thaddeus's tall figure protecting them. At that moment, Iguka felt Thaddeus's gaze on him and understood that, as a man, it was his duty to ensure his friend's safety. So, after helping Sasaki, who was beside him, they quickly went downstairs. Seeing this, Thaddeus let out a sigh of relief when he saw the two leaving. At this moment, a cursed spirit had already obtained the dark purple finger that had fallen to the ground. Not in front of my eyes. Thaddeus's body flickered, and in an instant, he cut down more than a thousand sins of that monster that was right in front of him with the help of his shunpo. Boom! But just at that moment, a humanoid monster with dark brown eyes all over its body stood on the ruins of the room that had been destroyed by Thaddeus's explosive power, and its huge mouth oozed terribly corrosive pus that dripped onto the floor. TSSS, 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 large and small holes were corroded into the ground. The stench constantly emitted bursts of corrosive substance, like a worm just emerging from the sewer. The repugnant monster was about three meters tall, like a giant. Facing it was Thaddeus, who hadn't fully unsheathed his sword. His now longer hair gleamed whitish as he raised his head casually. Compared to Thaddeus's height, that monster was truly giant. A class 4 cursed spirit. Thaddeus calmly looked at the monster that appeared in front of him, with a slight disappointment in his tone. This should give him points, much more than he got from the other cursed spirit. Clean the toilets, keep cleaning. It seemed that the strange voices of several accusations from the man's position in front of Thaddeus echoed with each other, with bursts of weirdness. Boom, the monster ran noisily towards Thaddeus. Each step of its huge body made the ground under its feet constantly tremble. You're not a threat, with just my physical strength, it will be enough. Boom, the cursed spirit, measuring over three meters, attacked Thaddeus with terrifying power. Just tickles. Faced with the terrible monster that could easily turn ordinary people into minced meat with one blow, the corners of Thaddeus's mouth drew a sneer of disdain. 7. Die. 1. Creator's Thoughts. S.R. Cuervo. You can read more chapters on my Patreon, S.R. Cuervo. Chapter 9, Things Change. The spiritual pressure of Thaddeus momentarily exploded, releasing a small fraction of his full power. Crack. Thaddeus' body and gaze focused solely on the monster before him. Before the Class 4 Cursed Spirit, which was about to rival Class 3 ones in power, could strike him, his figure instantly turned into an afterimage. Boom! The enormous body of the Cursed Spirit directly smashed through a concrete wall, and dust and wall fragments flew all over the hallway, covering the monster's massive body. A single physical strike. The monster scratched its head in confusion. The young man in front of it clearly didn't possess cursed energy, yet he managed to dodge its attack. The confident Cursed Spirit, who was sure of killing its prey, couldn't react in time. 10. It's common for the forces of major shaman schools, jiu-jitsu masters, and cursed spirits to face each other, and this has been happening for thousands of years. However, humans without cursed energy are considered their prey, a type of victim who can't resist their power. Yet, that ordinary teenager disappeared before its eyes in the blink of an eye. 1. The monster's dance eyes scanned around, trying to locate the boy. Suddenly, a playful voice echoed in its ears. Are you looking for me? The voice was like a devil's murmur in hell, causing even the low-level cursed spirit, which shouldn't have any feelings, to tremble involuntarily. I can wipe you out? Yes, it's not my fault. Class 4 cursed spirits could only express their resentment. If it can speak, it shouldn't be a class 4. Maybe it's reaching the limits of class 3. Should I investigate further? No, a waste of time. Thaddeus maximized his shunpo, appearing above the cursed spirit's head in a second. His finger slid along the purple handle of his sword, unsheathing it slowly. The cursed spirit's gaze seemed to search for its prey, perhaps anticipating a new delicious meal. Roar! But just a few seconds before the class 4 cursed spirit could bring down its huge hand in anger, the tyrannical wind of the attack caused ripples. However, this didn't phase Thaddeus, and he unsheathed his sword without blinking. The blade of his sword aimed for its target. Boom! Boom! Hit a some Clean sword strike. 
pang, resounding echoes, as Thaddeus' sword clashed with the tough and robust body of the cursed spirit, the cuts were so clean that his enemy took a moment to react. In an instant, along with his attack, a terrifying sensation exploded, and the strike that was not supposed to do much damage ended up smashing through walls, creating a gigantic crater in the school structure. 4. Resounding echoes, faced with this powerful attack, the class 4 cursed spirit didn't even have time to counter. The next moment, the powerful class 4 cursed spirit, with its tough skin, fell to the ground in two halves and quickly withered away. Those numerous dark, shining eyes lost their color, and at that moment, there was only silence. But just then, numerous cursed spirits resembling worms began to emerge from all corners of the hallway, to which Thaddeus responded with thunderous force. Senmei Arashi. Thousand page cut. Boom, boom, in just a fraction of a second, the second sword technique he had learned and practiced in his free time displayed its full power. This ultimate technique involved attacking with multiple blade movements executed at such extreme speed and force that it could literally shred a target into pieces. 1. As these numerous cursed spirits closed in on Thaddeus, they were shredded by the edge of his sword, and a flame appeared over his body, burning their remains to ashes. Congratulations on sending numerous cursed spirits to eternal rest. You have obtained the Bakudo Binding Way book with 99 Keto spells. You have repeatedly killed weakened class 4 cursed spirits. You have obtained plus 700 soul points. Demonic Arts. 9. After catching his breath, Thaddeus was surprised to have obtained a new item. After having obtained his sealed sword in a staff ten years ago, he only recently started using it. So, after ten years, he had acquired a book with cursed spells. 5. However, he had no time to check such rewards right now. Not much longer. Thaddeus's face reflected a cold expression. Around him, corpses gradually piled up, and he cremated them with the special flames that granted him soul points. In this process of attacks, Thaddeus adjusted his moves and attacked with increasing experience. At the same time, in the silent darkness, his senses explored again, and a deadly attack flew toward his chest. His thin clothes were torn, revealing his chest that was only slightly reddened by the impact. At that moment, he could only defend against the attack, but numerous tentacles emerged from the darkness toward him. With a powerful expression, Thaddeus struck back at the monster. 1. Boom, the numerous tentacles exploded under the pressure of the attack, along with the entire figure of the cursed spirit. Error? Oh, 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 oh. The cursed spirit let out a painful scream, and fear filled its eyes. 1. After forcefully striking the chest of the cursed spirit, it fell to the ground and died within seconds. At that moment, Thaddeus raised Sukuna's finger, a special class cursed object. A single finger was more than enough to create a very powerful special class cursed spirit, demonstrating how potent Sukuna really was. 6. What should I do? Thaddeus wondered, but at that instant, a white-colored figure appeared before his eyes and moved its fist toward him. Boom, the powerful impact was indeed strong, forcing Thaddeus to raise his sheathed sword over his chest to reduce the impact. At the same time, Sukuna's finger fell to the ground. Boom, unable to withstand the surprise attack, Thaddeus crashed not far from the school, creating a large crack in the ground. Boom, at that moment, Megami and Itatari had arrived at the school and could sense two distinct pressures, one appearing to be protective and a powerful breath of a cursed spirit not far from the building. It seems there are two cursed spirit pressures and one completely different. Wait here, I'll go in, Megami told Itatari, rapidly unlocking the ice door and entering the school. He didn't know if they were too late to save Itatari's two friends. Just as Megami was about to rush in, he saw Sasaki and Aguki running down the stairs in a panic, tears in their eyes. Help, Thaddeus, he, he's still inside the school. Sasaki's panic-stricken tears couldn't be stopped, and after exiting the school, he fell to the ground. Thaddeus couldn't die, someone like him didn't deserve it. What's going on? Why is Thaddeus involved in this? Itadori quickly leaped over the iron gate and supported the sobbing Sasaki. If Thaddeus insisted on not joining any clubs, why did he stay in the occult club just when things went wrong? I, I don't know. Go up and rescue him, there are terrible monsters up there. Sasaki spoke in a terrified tone. Boom, boom, just then, the ground shook, and two loud explosions echoed around the school. Debris and dust filled the air, creating a completely oppressive feeling about what was happening. You take care of them here, I'll go up and see what's happening. Megami quickly ascended the stairs. If there was anyone alive up there, it would be more than luck. Indeed, as Megami climbed the stairs, the disaster of collapsed walls and debris everywhere left him astonished. What exactly happened in this place? However, his eyes focused on a repugnant-looking cursed spirit. Still, there were no traces of the boy they had mentioned. Have they been eaten? That question was the first one that came to mind, but at that moment, through cracks in the walls, Megami caught sight of two blurry figures moving at high speed. Is someone else fighting a cursed spirit? Crack? Darn it. Megami couldn't afford to be distracted, as things had gotten more complicated than he could have imagined. He extended his hands, then quickly clenched them into fists and gestured, Jade Wolves. 4. In an instant where there was nothing, black substance suddenly coiled and rapidly formed two huge wolf-shaped figures. One was white, and the other was black. Both showed sharp fangs, ready to attack at any moment. The cursed spirit that seemed about to devour Sukuna's finger thought that the figure had returned and unconsciously trembled. A cursed spirit could feel fear, especially one with intelligence. It only now realized that it wasn't the fearsome type it expected but someone else. In this case, there was nothing to fear, so it immediately mobilized its cursed energy to attack its enemy, attempting to eliminate them entirely. 2. Creator's Thoughts S.R. Cuervo You can read more chapters on my Patreon, S.R. Cuervo Chapter 10, A Dead End Battle I need you to eliminate those around me, I'll take care of the biggest one. Devour them all. Megami ran at full speed straight toward the largest cursed spirit. He could sense a strong aura from the cursed object he was seeking in its teeth, which meant it hadn't merged with that powerful object yet. To its neck. One of Megami's jade wolves lunged at the cursed spirit's throat, preventing it from swallowing Sukuna's finger and fusing with its power. However, this grown cursed spirit was not so easy to restrain. So, Megami dodged the annoying monsters closest to him while changing the form in his hands, getting as close as possible to his target. 
He knew that if this cursed spirit ate one of Sukuna's fingers, it would become a special grade cursed spirit, and everyone within a 10 kilometer radius would die without being able to resist. As Megami approached, some cursed spirits rushed forward. Although they were torn apart by the jade wolf that still remained nearby, some still obstructed Megami's progress. At this moment, the largest cursed spirit found an opening to eliminate the summoner preventing its fusion with that delicious source of cursed energy. Megami was desperate, and for that reason, he ignored the damage he could receive. Boom! Upon receiving that impact, Megami spit out a mouthful of blood, and his body, unable to cushion the attack, hit the wall to the side of the corridor. The wall instantly cracked, showing the strength of the damage. The cursed spirit had been taking in more and more of that power into its mouth, so every passing second meant the cursed spirit was growing stronger. Damn it! Megami gritted his teeth, blood dripping from his forehead, but he felt no pain at all. At this moment, the most important thing was to eliminate the cursed spirit, otherwise, it would be difficult to escape alive once it became a special grade. At this point, Megami was willing to die to save those who deserved to live, and there were hundreds of people like that in this city. Many of them suffered day by day, and the last thing they deserved was an imminent death by a cursed spirit. At this rate, the cursed spirit would only grow stronger, and its strength would reach a point where he couldn't counteract it. Then, that problem would be a disaster. It seems I can only use this trick. Megami supported his body with one hand and raised the other. I'll help you. A loud roar came from outside the cracked window, and the window about to collapse shattered in an instant as a tattery swiftly entered and unexpectedly kicked the cursed spirit in the head. 2. A chance. Although Megami didn't know why a tattery appeared in this dangerous place, he should be grateful and not waste this opportunity. In an instant, he made numerous hand movements, and then they all combined with cursed energy. In no time, a sharp purple curse manipulated by Megami flew out, decapitating the cursed spirit that was being suppressed by one of the jade wolves. You said you'd take care of them downstairs. Megami seemed to recover and stood up after the cursed spirit was eliminated. Only then did he have time to wipe the blood from his forehead and mouth. What about Thaddeus? Wait. Why can't I see him? Itattery discovered that Thaddeus, who had saved his friends, was not inside the decapitated cursed spirit. Instead, he found a dark purple finger. Are you talking about the guy who protected your friends? I didn't see him when I went up. Common people can't escape a cursed spirit. Maybe he's dead. Megami didn't want to talk much as he was still concerned about the person with a sword fighting against a white cursed spirit. Could it be Thaddeus? That's unlikely. There's no jiu-jitsu sorcery school in this place, and he didn't sense any familiar energy, so it's unlikely but not impossible. 8. However, his words directed at a tattery were speaking the truth. Common people can't escape a cursed spirit, as once you become its target, it won't rest until it kills you. Otherwise, how could a cursed spirit be dangerous? That's the reality of the world, even the most powerful sorcerers are slowly losing the battle against cursed spirits as their numbers continue to increase. Dead. A tattery was stunned. Although he didn't know Thaddeus very well, he was a fellow classmate. At this moment, there was unease in his heart and a sense of guilt. Why didn't he go up earlier? He saved his friends, but Itattery should have been the one to die in his place. Thaddeus shouldn't have done it, he had no purpose to sacrifice himself for others. Wait, should there be a purpose to sacrifice oneself for someone? 1. Anyway, I must first protect that cursed object in your hands to guard against spatial effects. I'm sure that if not, the consequences would be disastrous. Megami knew that Itattery was going through a process of assimilating the death of someone close, but there was no choice but to adapt to that kind of loss. 1. In this world, even the most powerful sorcerers die at the hands of cursed spirits, so considering that, people are fragile, everyone in this world can die swiftly and suddenly. Boom, but in the next moment, the ceiling collapsed, and a cursed spirit larger than the one that had just been eliminated simply fell from above, wanting to bite Sukuna's finger, but upon seeing an annoying figure, it first took care of eliminating him. As a result, Megami took a clean blow. Crack? This time, Megami almost passed out. The first time he received a blow, he was gravely injured, and this time was much stronger than the first. Itattery also took a hit and was sent flying as if his body weighed nothing, but he didn't suffer as much damage as Megami. After falling to the ground, he quickly got up and looked at the giant in front of him in astonishment. Leave, that cursed spirit can only be eliminated with cursed energy. You can't defeat it. Megami held his ribs while shouting at Itattery, he didn't want to see anyone die undeservingly. It's not the time to be a hero, you'll die if I leave, and unfortunately, I don't want another burden on my mind. Itattery ran towards the cursed spirit and attacked its eyes, crushing them with all his strength. A wearer. The red eyes of the cursed spirit exploded, and blood splattered in all directions suddenly. Megami didn't expect Itattery to deal so much damage to the cursed spirit they were facing. In that moment, he reacted instantly and attacked the spirit with a curse-formed attack at his disposal. Devour it. The cursed spirit attacked by Itattery roared in pain, and the finger of Sukuna that was about to enter its mouth fell to the ground again. This cursed spirit was quite intelligent. At this moment, it had to make a judgment about what was more important. Just when it realized its life was in danger, it spat Sukuna's finger into the air, opened its mouth, and its neck extended forward, attempting to swallow the finger in one go. Itattery, if it swallows that finger, not only the two of us, but also your friends outside will die. That cursed spirit will become a special grade in an instant and its cursed energy will increase to unimaginable levels. Megami shouted with all his strength. To obtain extremely strong power by eating that finger? In that case, Itattery was one step ahead of the cursed spirit, so he opened his mouth and bit the finger as it was closer to him, causing the cursed spirit to roar. Gulp? 1. The sound of swallowing echoed as Itattery swallowed the entire finger, and when Megami opened his eyes, he saw a chilling scene. Ryaman Sukuna's fingers, a special grade cursed object, you will definitely die. Megami had no time to stop him and let Itattery eat the fingers. Yes, there's one in a million chance. If Itattery didn't do that, both of them would die. So, in their desperate situation, it was inevitable. Bam! Itattery suddenly moved his leg, and the powerful cursed spirit exploded directly under the impact, sending flesh and blood flying, staining the floor. The ceiling also broke from the impact, and moonlight from the sky fell and shone on Itattery's body. Ah, uh, ha ha ha, ha ha ha, one. Itattery suddenly looked up to the sky and laughed. Many black lines appeared on the surface of his skin all over his body, and his eyes changed from two to four. 
The additional pair of eyes were located one centimeter below the original ones. Indeed, the moonlight feels so good against the skin. Itadori took off his jacket and opened his hands to gaze at the moonlight. It's over, the worst one in a million outcome, the personal incarnation of a special grade cursed object. Megami looked at Itadori in disbelief. The flesh of the cursed spirit is too dull. Where are the humans? Where are the women? Sukuna took control of Itadori Yuji's body, stepped on the railings with his feet, looked at the brightly lit city in the distance, and said with excitement, This era isn't so bad. Women and children crawl around like worms. Sukuna became even more excited as he spoke, and his expression became uncontrollable. It's wonderful. Ah, uh, ha ha ha, this will be a massacre. Megami kept backing away. It was impossible for him to defeat this incarnation of a cursed spirit with his current physical condition. The difference in strength was too great. Ah, uh, when Sukuna wanted to continue laughing, his right hand suddenly grabbed his face. What's happening? Stepping back from the railing, Itadori's voice came out from his body. What are you doing in someone else's body? Give it back. Sukuna didn't know why this happened. He had already occupied this guy's body and should be in control. How can you contain me? Ryum and Sukuna wanted to know why. Because this is my body. Itadori completely regained control of his body after saying this. Damn it, it's too late to leave now. I can only do my best. Megami gritted his teeth. He absolutely couldn't let this cursed spirit escape today. Creator's thoughts. SR Cuervo. I'll be uploading one chapter a day if it's big, two if it's small. Thank you for your support and you could help me if you support me on my Patreon and by the way read twice as many chapters, SR Cuervo. Chapter 11, Things Didn't Go Well. You are no longer a human being. Megami took a deep breath, he was the only exorcist in this place, so he had to be responsible no matter what kind of problem presented itself. Thus, he said, according to the Jiu-Jitsu law, Itadori Yuji, as a cursed being, I will exorcise you. 5. Wait, I'm fine now. The most important thing is that both of us are pretty beaten up, so let's go to the hospital. Itadori raised his hands and looked at Megami casually. Damn it, what should I do? Megami struck a combat pose, despite his badly injured body, but he didn't make any move as he didn't know how to begin. What's the situation? Just as Megami was in a dilemma, a soft voice echoed in his ears, causing his soul to tremble even more. Professor Gojo, what are you doing here? 6. The man standing next to Megami had silver white hair and stood at least 1.9 meters tall. His eyes were surrounded by a piece of black fabric, and his face couldn't be clearly seen, but his features were very delicate and elegant. Hello. Gojo Satoru raised his hand to greet Megami, then looked at Megami's body and smiled. I really didn't plan on coming to this place first, but you look like a mess. Gojo Satoru had sensed two presences, and in addition to those, there were very strange traces of cursed energy he wasn't familiar with. After assimilating that faint and subtle trace of cursed energy with a different power source, he was about to head there. But then, there was an even more violent and uncontrolled cursed energy that had been contained at one point and then disappeared, so he decided to come to the school first. Thinking about this, Gojo Satoru took out his mobile phone from his pocket, appearing disinterested in what was happening here, and said, Well, listen, the higher UPS were worried about the missing cursed object, so, did you find it? The indifference and arrogance in Gojo Satoru's words were well recognized by his student Megami, so he remained silent. At that moment, Itadori pointed to himself and said quietly, Um, sorry, I ate it. Huh. Gojo Satoru then looked at Itadori doubtfully and asked, Seriously, it's true. Megami and Itadori said in unison at this moment. Gojo Satoru then approached Itadori, touched his chin, and looked at him intently, as if he was looking at a delicate and special object. Haha, <laughs> you guys really made it interesting. Gojo Satoru laughed and stepped away from Itadori. Is there something weird with your body or desires? Itadori felt a little different from before, so he replied simply, No. Can you let Sukuna out? Gojo asked Itadori. Sukuna. Itadori was a bit confused. Who is Sukuna? It's the curse you ate, Gojo Satoru explained. Oh, um, I should be able to. Itadori nodded. Then 10 seconds should be enough, you should be back in 10 seconds. Gojo Satoru stretched a bit, seeming to want to fight Ryum and Sukuna. But, it doesn't matter, I'm invincible. 5. Gojo Satoru used this sentence directly to dispel Itadori's concerns. His tone and arrogance made a great first impression on Itadori. Gojo Satoru then tossed the snacks he had just bought to Megami, saying, Hold this. This person actually went to buy snacks before coming here. At a moment like this, when it's a matter of life and... Megami thought, not knowing what to say. At that moment, a black shadow rushed straight at Gojo Satoru. Watch out. Boom, the blurry figure crashed into the ground. After the smoke dissipated, Megami found that Itadori's body, controlled by Sukuna, was just a few centimeters away from his face. Gojo Satoru was sitting on Itadori's waist, and Itadori was kneeling there. Huh. Sukuna suddenly turned around and tried to grab Gojo Satoru, but he easily evaded. Ryaman Sukuna was not one to be afraid of a fight, so the more exciting it got, the better he felt. He continued attacking Gojo Satoru, but he found that no matter how he struck, the opponent could easily avoid it, wasting his efforts. Gojo Satoru then lightly punched Sukuna's hand away. Sukuna was thrown into the sky and frowned secretly, he's terribly fast. At that moment, Gojo Satoru punched with a simple blow, and the impact of his fist sent Sukuna flying. Damn it, sorcerers always give me trouble. Sukuna sneered, jumped up, and after landing, he punched Gojo Satoru. 6. Boom, the ground in front of them shattered under the punch, and the wall of the building behind it was destroyed, showing how powerful the strike was. Dust flew everywhere, and Sukuna stopped feeling Gojo Satoru's presence. He sneered and was about to say something, but the gray smoke in front of him slowly disappeared, and Gojo Satoru remained intact, smiling, and muttering, 7, 8, 9, you should be back. Knock, knock. Sukuna's heart trembled suddenly, and he knew that he was back in control of this body again. Damn it, again. Sukuna's consciousness became weaker and weaker until Itadori regained control of his body. Uh, are you okay? Gojo Satoru showed a surprised expression. I didn't expect that. You can really control him. But I could still hear his voice in my head. Itadori tapped his head. Gojo Satoru walked over to Itadori and said, Maybe you can function as a vessel. After reaching Itadori, he lightly struck him. Itadori quickly lost consciousness and collapsed, and Gojo Satoru lifted him up in his arms. What did you do? Megami finally felt better at this moment. Just let him sleep for a while. 
If he's not being possessed by Sukuna when he wakes up, he might be a vessel. So, tell me, what should we do with him? Gojo Satoru turned to look at Megami, who was sitting on the ground. Even if he's a vessel, according to the Jujutsu law, Itadori Yuji is still subject to the death penalty, but I don't want him to die. Megami looked at his teacher seriously, and the atmosphere fell silent for a while. Is there anything else you need to tell me? Gojo Satoru asked as he looked in a specific direction. I saw a cursed spirit fighting with a person holding a sword, but I can't be sure what I really saw. Megami shared this information with his teacher. 12. Oh, I'm already aware of that. Don't worry, my dear student, Gojo Satoru said with a wide smile, very intrigued to meet that person with overwhelming power hidden within them. Creator's thoughts. SR Cuervo. I'll be uploading one chapter a day if it's big, two if it's small. Thank you for your support and you could help me if you support me on my Patreon and by the way read twice as many chapters. SR Cuervo. Chapter 12, The White Figure. Shina Maggie. Die, everyone must die. 3. A gigantic figure with a human-like body but much larger walked slowly towards the spot where Thaddeus had been thrown by its blow, its steps were slow but extremely heavy, causing cracks wherever it stepped. Unlike the cursed spirits, which could be perceived due to their cursed energy, this monster didn't release any cursed energy. Instead, its energy was similar to the one Thaddeus used. Ajitcha, kill Shinigami. Everyone must die. 5. Thaddeus had already gotten back on his feet, but he bore traces of wounds on his face and chest from the previous blow. This sudden, repulsive energy made him momentarily freeze in place, and it was only now that he reacted. Why is an intermediate hollow here, where it shouldn't exist? Those were Thaddeus's words as he got back on his feet. The Ajichas, literally meaning great intermediate hollows, are Minos who have evolved from the Jillian state to a higher, much more powerful state, granting them greater intelligence and combat abilities. Unlike Jillians, Ajichas can vary greatly in appearance, ranging from muscular human-like creatures to more animalistic ones. However, when Thaddeus arrived in this place, he had been oblivious to the world and never thought that creatures from another world could come here. In just a few seconds of thought, all of this could be due to his strange power that was not related to cursed energy. Nevertheless, these hollows were still weak compared to Thaddeus's strength. I can't fight in this place, so I'll take him to a more remote location. Thinking this, Thaddeus used his shunpo to move away from the area while keeping his speed for the intermediate hollow to follow. 1. The intermediate hollow thought Thaddeus was fleeing from him, so he immediately chased him, leaving the place behind. As they moved to a deserted area, he had enough time to reflect on how things had gone out of control, despite his careful planning. Well, I think this place will do. Thaddeus stopped when he believed there was enough space to avoid being disturbed or seen by others. Shinigami. Kill Shinigami. Boom, the intermediate hollow rushed towards Thaddeus in an instant, and at the same time, his Ryuryoku subtly moved through his hands as he prepared to strike. The countless power of this hollow was exposed without reserve, attempting to pierce his enemy's chest. Boom, Thaddeus knew that this was another opportunity to improve his combat skills, so he fought hand-to-hand -hand with this powerful hollow. The ground beneath their feet sank, and the shockwaves from their strikes shook the surroundings. With pure strength, Thaddeus didn't use any mastered techniques at the moment. However, it worked in his favor as there were cracks appearing in the hollow's body, trying to match his level. You will die, you must die. The voice of the intermediate hollow growled as it opened its arms, revealing its chest, which suddenly split open, and numerous hands emerged, surprising Thaddeus. Senka. Flower of speed. Noticing something unfamiliar, Thaddeus established a distance from the intermediate hollow and then moved behind it. The Senka technique is a special Shunpo technique where one moves behind their opponents to attack them directly from the back. The movement is so swift that the opponent cannot tell if they were attacked from the front or the back, and even an external observer might find it impossible to know what just happened. 1. Having reached the back of his enemy, Thaddeus kicked him, sending him flying into the distance. Boom, at this rate, I'll end up naked. Thaddeus looked at his torn pants and shook his head with some discomfort. You will die, you must die. The grotesque voice of the intermediate hollow resounded as it moved at great speed towards Thaddeus. This time, I'll use a new technique, hopefully strong enough. Thaddeus didn't need to use his sword to fight this enemy, his power was enough to eliminate it. Moreover, all of this would help him familiarize himself with his strength and understand that he must be prepared to fight even without his powerful sword. With these thoughts, Thaddeus prepared himself. Just one finger will suffice to finish you off. Facing such a powerful attack, Thaddeus's tone was serious, as if he had a terrifying monster in front of him. This time, he decided to end it to avoid further inconveniences. Seeing the intermediate hollow approaching him at great speed, Thaddeus's Ryuryoku exploded and concentrated at the tip of his index finger, giving it a formidable appearance. Oni Dekapin. 4. Impact of the Demon. A technique where a simple finger movement has enough physical force to send an opponent flying a considerable distance. Boom, boom, boom. Thaddeus used this technique several times almost simultaneously on different parts of the intermediate hollow, breaking its limbs before it could react. The parts of the hollow that touched Thaddeus's finger trembled and then exploded as if a bomb had detonated in those specific areas of its body. Thaddeus's energy exploded again, but this time, it focused on his body, providing him with much more protection and shielding him from any other surprise attacks, if any. Erg. The intermediate hollow groaned, and in a matter of seconds, every part of its body was destroyed by a force it couldn't stop. Even though I don't know why an existence like you is in this world, both you and others will be eliminated from human existence. Thaddeus's sword was unsheathed, and in just a few seconds, the body of the intermediate hollow was torn into over a thousand pieces. 1. Moments later, the body of the intermediate hollow was incinerated by flames, and particles of light flew towards Thaddeus's body. The pure energy resulting from this took shape and, in a matter of seconds, was absorbed by Thaddeus's body, giving him a new understanding of where his power and energy, which propelled his strength to new levels, came from. Congratulations, you have eliminated the first hollow you encountered, fulfilling one of the major requirements as Yamamoto's heir. You have killed an intermediate hollow, earning 1600 soul points. 4. Fight with honor and bleed in battle, you have obtained the hollows and cursed spirits bait, an artifact that attracts cursed spirits to a specific point after being used. That systematic voice sounded in Thaddeus's head. The hollows and cursed spirits bait looked like a silver coin with seemingly runic inscriptions on the back, activated by breaking it. It seems relatively easy to break, although being an artifact used to attract spirits, its fragility may depend on who attempts to break it. 1. I guess it's already too late to go back. 
Thaddeus murmured after putting away the coin materialized out of curiosity. Looking in the direction of the school, he sighed, and in the blink of an eye, his body disappeared. At this moment, Thaddeus was already at home. If everything went according to the normal trajectory, then there shouldn't be any general problems with all the things that went out of control. If his intervention caused a problem, not only the vessel of Sukuna would disappear, but also people who shouldn't die at least at this moment. 2. Thaddeus didn't know why a hollow would appear in this world. Not only did this hollow lack cursed energy, but its appearance was similar to the ones he was familiar with. However, being in this world, of which he knew little, something more must be happening for hollows to appear and especially target him. 1. Creator's Thoughts. SR Cuervo. I'll be uploading one chapter a day if it's big, two if it's small. Thank you for your support and you could help me if you support me on my Patreon and by the way read twice as many chapters, SR Cuervo. Chapter 13, Assimilate the Force. Name, Thaddeus Sato. 1. General Attributes. Strength, level 6 1056 slash 1100. 1. Speed, level 7 1190 slash 1300. Endurance, level 5 888 slash 900. Spirit, level 8 1560 slash 1700. Zenjutsu, Sword Art, Skill, level 3 540 slash 600. Hakuta, Hand to Hand Combat, Skill, level 3 550 slash 600. 1. Hoho, -ho, Movement and Speed, Skill, level 4 790 slash 900. 1. Kidu, Magic, Skill, level 00 slash 100. Zenpakito Name, Raijin Jaka. 1. Zenpakito Type, Fire Type Zenpakito. Shikai Release Ability, The Shikai Ability of Raijin Jaka is called Anetsujigoku, Flames of Hell. When activated, the flames of Raijin Jaka intensify and engulf the entire surrounding area. These flames are extremely hot and practically indestructible, capable of burning anything they touch. Additionally, the heat generated by the flames is enough to melt steel and reduce it to ashes. Abilities Once Shikai is Released. Ability, Jokaku Injo, Burning Fortress, Level, 00-100. Description, The flames of Raijin Jaka create a gigantic wall of fire that is used to hold one or multiple targets captive for an unspecified amount of time. Ability, Teimatsu, Torch, Level, 20-500. Description, this ability can create a great inferno with the simple movement of Raijin Jaka. The fire generated by the attack consumes everything caught within the flames until nothing remains but ashes. The flames created by Raijin Jaka can be controlled with great precision by Yamamoto to attack only the chosen targets and also control the intensity of the flames. Ability, Enetsu Jigoku, Flames of Hell, Level, 30-700. Description, this technique consists of releasing gigantic pillars of fire over a specific area. The purpose of Anetsu Jigoku is to enclose the target within the inferno and completely destroy it. Even if it means immolating both the attacker and the victim, as well as anything within the technique's perimeter. Shikai skill level, level 40-900. Bankai release ability, the Bankai of Raijin Jaka is called Zenkan no Tachi, Sun Searing Slash. With this final release, Yamamoto unleashes the true destructive power of his Zenpakito. Bankai envelopes his sword in even more intense flames and creates a fiery aura around his body. In this state, Yamamoto can freely control and manipulate fire, allowing him to launch powerful and devastating attacks. Bankai skill level, level 0 slash sealed curse level. 1. Cursed level description, level 2 300 slash 500. 1. Additional abilities or powers obtained at the cursed level, 0. Items. Hollows and cursed spirits bait, 1 single use book of Bakudo. Description, a book with the 99 facts of Kido. These cannot be learned with soul points, they can only be learned through the hard work of the apprentice. Souls sent to eternal rest, 2950 souls cursed spirits souls, 94 soul points, 2950. 1. Show me my status. The first thing Thaddeus did was use the soul points he had obtained from eliminating numerous cursed spirits at school and the intermediate hollow he had fought before coming here. This time, he first increased his strength to level 7, which was about to increase on its own, but he wanted to level his statistics as quickly as possible. His physical endurance was slightly affected in the fight, so he also increased it to the next level. Then, since he would need to use his shikai or abilities like spells, he absolutely had to increase his spirit, which was his power source, so he directly raised it to level 9. After months of training and being guided by the soul marks he had found in this city, Thaddeus had increased his statistics solely through brute effort, so he didn't rely much on soul points, even since he was a child. Having trained very little with his sword, he decided to raise it directly to level 4, along with his martial art. His special movement skill was also promoted, so now he could be much more skillful when using Shunpo and its variants. As for his Shikai, he made a direct promotion to level 6, as if he wanted to unleash the hidden power of his sword, he needed at least to be able to control the flames. With this level, he could control half of its power in Shikai form, unleashing powerful flames when he pleased. With the points he had left, he raised his torch ability directly to level 5, leaving only 34 soul points. In just a few levels, he had spent everything he had earned in one night. To reach the maximum level will require more than a special class spirit. Thaddeus muttered as he climbed the stairs to his residence. After this incident at school, Itadori will definitely be forced to join the jiu-jitsu school in Tokyo and then leave high school. Thaddeus leaned back in his chair, and the moonlight fell on his face, dusty from the debris, as he looked out the window, lost in thought. If Itadori were to go to the jiu-jitsu school in Tokyo, it wouldn't be impossible for me to stay here alone and silently become stronger, but there will be more opportunities for me to be with them, and we can watch out for each other. But I can't join the jiu-jitsu school at all. First of all, I completely missed my chance to interact with sorcerers after that intermediate hollow appeared out of nowhere. Secondly, how can I join a jiu-jitsu school? 8. These problems are indeed very special. After Itadori goes to Tokyo, basically the chances do not exist unless he goes directly to the sorcery school. He doesn't recall anything interesting happening in Sendai City in a short time, so the only possibility left for him is to attract attention. After all, Gojo Satoru and Megami came here to take Sukuna's finger. Now that Itadori has eaten that finger, there's no need to stay here. I knew that if I didn't return tonight, I wouldn't be able to meet Gojo Satoru at all. Thaddeus shook his head as he thought about this. He had prioritized the elimination of that hollow over his own future, but he also didn't want to show too much of his power. With things turning out this way, he could only stay in this place until he had a better opportunity. 1. Forget it, I'm a bit hungry, let's cook something first. 
Thaddeus took off his torn shirt or what was left of it and, after dressing in decent clothes, he walked to the kitchen to prepare something to eat. He had a special ability that only he knew, and that was that he could eat anything to feel full, not caring about appearance or any other trivial things that others might consider while eating. Many people tend to eat prepared or cooked food made by others, but Thaddeus, who had to get used to eating food he didn't like, now prepared his food when he had the chance. But that was fine, besides taking good care of the money he had, he had to avoid eating expensive food. 3. So Thaddeus, with his limited resources, prepared his food. After all, he had been doing it before. This time, some noodles will be enough. Thaddeus said as he poured boiling water over the noodles and then covered them. After the eight minutes of cooking passed, Thaddeus removed the water and added the other utensils. Tap tap, tap tap. At this moment, as Thaddeus was about to eat, he heard a series of approaching footsteps towards his building. Nobody else should be in this building unless someone moved here, so could it be a neighbor or someone else? Thaddeus stopped his movements and held his unsheathed sword, which was not in its sealed form, as his eyes fixed on the door. Bum, 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 the sound of knocking on the door was heard, and Thaddeus frowned. The footsteps were light, and the sound they emitted was not concealed, but the energy of that person felt very different. He could hear that the footsteps outside belonged to someone else. Just as Thaddeus was about to ask, the other person spoke first. Um, don't get nervous. I am Gojo Satoru from the Jiu-Jitsu school. I felt that you are someone very special with a unique sense of duty, so that's why I'm here. Is it convenient for you to open the door and talk? 14. Gojo Satoru knew that Thaddeus was holding some kind of cursed weapon that seemed to contain immense power, but he couldn't detect anything else. The young man's power that caught his interest was extremely difficult to sense unless he released it, and if it weren't for the trace of cursed energy inside Thaddeus, Gojo Satoru might have thought he had the wrong apartment. Gojo Satoru. Thaddeus froze when he heard that person outside his apartment door. Why would Gojo Satoru come to him? 2. In the first place, how did he manage to find him if they had never met before? Thaddeus knew that Gojo Satoru's eyes could see all kinds of information and analyze cursed energy with his bare eyes, but Thaddeus didn't manipulate cursed energy, although he had a significant amount inside his body. 2. Now it was useless to think about any logical things that could have happened or any mistakes he might have made because Gojo Satoru himself was at his door. Thaddeus held his sword and walked towards the door, opened it, and looked at the person he had thought of as the most powerful existence in this world. 1. Hello, hello. Gojo Satoru's tall figure appeared in front of Thaddeus, with a clean and neat, strange, and beautiful suit, and only Gojo Satoru could embody it incisively and vividly. Um, hello. Thaddeus did his best to calm his thoughts. To be honest, this was the first time he had seen a sorcerer of such a high level in front of his eyes. If Satoru wanted to do something, Thaddeus could do little to defend himself with his current abilities. 8. Although from the beginning, Thaddeus had underestimated his own power, which had been increasing since he arrived in this world. However, Thaddeus wasn't worried about these little details. Even though Thaddeus could be arrogant and indifferent to some human deaths, he had his human side. Ah, it smells so good. Are you cooking something? Gojo Satoru sniffed with his imposing nose, as if he had found something beautiful. 1. Oh, yes, just preparing some instant noodles. By the way, if you don't mind, can you tell me who you are? Thaddeus didn't finish his words when suddenly Gojo Satoru's figure passed through the door and entered as if it were his own house. Haha, <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. I didn't come empty-handed either. Gojo Satoru proceeded as if not paying much attention to Thaddeus' words and soon entered his home. In fact, Thaddeus had already expected that someone like Gojo Satoru, who considered himself the most powerful existence and often said so, would be someone who didn't follow common sense. Anything that was unreasonable to him was reasonable, anything that couldn't be done, he did it, and if he knew there was a trap or something dangerous, he would head straight for it because his strength was invincible. Thaddeus couldn't question him, he didn't have the power to do so, and in fact, he didn't want to. This benefited him so much that it was irrational to feel angry or off-focus about what was happening right now. 2. It seems I left some kind of trace in my previous fight, with Gojo Satoru's six eyes, it's easy to follow the traces of any energy since he has the ability to analyze all kinds of information, Thaddeus thought as he closed the door and approached the figure towering much taller than him. 1. There are utensils and chopsticks here, and I also have forks in case you need them. Thaddeus sat across from Gojo Satoru while placing his sword on his lap. No need, I'll do it myself. Gojo Satoru smiled even more as he caught the subtle movements of Thaddeus. This young man was ready to go into battle at any moment, from the moment he opened the door until he sat in front of him, but he wasn't impulsive or violent. He knew how to identify superior threats, so he did nothing unless provoked. Gojo Satoru had made a judgment about Thaddeus and understood why he had survived so long without exposing himself or being killed by cursed spirits. Someone like him who fought against evil without training, recognition, or money was someone to admire. After collecting the bowls and chopsticks, Satoru wanted to test Thaddeus' composure and began eating. Thaddeus was hungry, so he ate his noodles slowly while pondering the possibilities he had and what Gojo Satoru's purpose was for acting this way. He didn't ask why Gojo Satoru came here and talked about it after eating the noodles. But Thaddeus could guess more or less what was happening, after all, he wasn't a fool. Is your name Thaddeus? It seems you're the only one living here, so why did you cook so much? 2. I didn't live alone, someone else used to live in this building. They moved out no more than a month ago. Now I live alone because the rent is low. As for why I cook so much, I eat a lot. Thaddeus calmly replied. 2. Gojo Satoru was already eating noodles as he listened. He originally wanted to gather more information, but Thaddeus acted out of the ordinary. Something that never fails. Satoru said after finishing his meal. Thaddeus put down his plate as he had finished, so he looked at Gojo Satoru to find out what he was doing. I was still hesitating, but now you must come back with me. Gojo Satoru put down the plates and suddenly said. What do you mean? Thaddeus didn't understand those words. Your food is good, and you are indeed a good person with numerous skills. If I leave you here, it will be a loss of talent. Gojo Satoru laughed and looked at Thaddeus, saying, There is a kind of cursed energy in the surroundings, if you can eliminate it, you should meet my expectations of you. Although Gojo Satoru said it abruptly, Thaddeus knew that he seemed to have some doubts about his power and abilities, and probably his intention was for him to go to the jiu-jitsu school to find out. Although your traces of cursed energy are very few compared to that powerful energy, you go unnoticed if I don't get serious. You left a breath of power in the last area where you fought. 
A cursed spirit managed to see you and told me that a demon with a sword had killed a powerful cursed spirit. My student also mentioned that he saw someone holding a sword. Although he mentioned that a student had died, someone called Thaddeus Sato who was possibly eaten by a cursed spirit. Things got curious when I learned more about you. 7. As I have special abilities, I knew those two energies belonged to you. I understand that the creature you killed is at least a grade 3 or even grade 2 cursed spirit, so that's not something just anyone could kill. But I'm curious, if your purpose was to kill cursed spirits, why didn't you come back? 1. Gojo Satoru stopped smiling and wanted to know the answer to his question. 1. Creator's Thoughts. S.R. Cuervo. 2,500 words you can read 10 advanced chapters on my Patreon, S.R. Cuervo. Chapter 14, Thaddeus' Stance. We must say that Gojo Satoru's analysis is very reasonable and assertive. On the other hand, Thaddeus had been acting strangely, clearly hiding his power for some reason, and now that he was discovered, his intentions should be known. Having caught the attention of someone as powerful as Gojo Satoru, Thaddeus knew that somehow he had sensed his Ritsu in the area where he had the fight with that intermediate hollow. I was at the school tonight because I planned to eliminate all the cursed spirits that were abnormally concentrated in the area. I didn't want anyone to get hurt due to events that could be avoided. So, I decided to wait and once a cursed spirit appeared, eliminate it, and withdraw from the place. Thaddeus didn't show a smile, he simply explained as seriously as he could and pointed out, I didn't know the reason why there were so many cursed spirits at the school. My only intention was to eliminate them until that finger was released from its seals. I eliminated dozens of cursed spirits, and my intention was to eradicate them completely until that cursed spirit appeared, the one you found at the battlefield where my traces of cursed energy were. 1. If you wonder why I didn't return to that school to check if all the cursed spirits had been eliminated, firstly, I knew that a sorcerer had arrived at the school. Most of the cursed spirits had been eliminated, so the work that person had to do was significantly reduced. Therefore, I trusted that sorcerer. Thaddeus was very transparent with his words, he answered with the truth and what he thought would happen without mentioning that it was his intention to distance himself from the high school after having eliminated a being like an intermediate hollow. 3. Of course, he didn't want to reveal more than this since it wasn't his intention, and he wasn't obliged to do so. Gojo Satoru, who received a satisfactory response, approached Thaddeus and removed the black cloth covering his eyes that seemed to see everything. Ha ha ha, it's alright, don't be so nervous. Um, the food you offered me was very nice. Gojo Satoru suddenly smiled and patted Thaddeus on the shoulder, took out a note from his bag, placed it on the table, then walked towards the door and said, You've responded well. Wait for me in this place in one week. Your abilities are needed. Your world can expand, and you won't have to hide your true strength. Thaddeus watched Gojo Satoru leave, and he never questioned his words at any moment. He simply gave him this note. The note on the table was picked up. It said XX location in Tokyo, which seemed to be the meeting place. This is really strange. It seems his intentions are to recruit me to go to the Jiu-Jitsu school. This was faster and easier than I expected. Thaddeus thought he couldn't go to the Jiu-Jitsu school, but the results went beyond his expectations. 1. In the coming week, Thaddeus no longer had reasons to go to school, so everyone should think he died, and there was no need to explain anything. He just needed to call his grandfather and tell him he would experience life at his own pace. Sasaki and Iguki were fine, so they would definitely go to school tomorrow or in a few days due to their impressions, but he no longer needed to attend school. Sometimes, when you have a much bigger plan in each person's life, leaving school is acceptable. However, if there is no plan like the one Thaddeus had in his hands now, he wouldn't leave school. Moreover, if he decided to go to school on the remaining days, Sasaki and Iguki would ask many questions, and Yusagi, who was his deskmate, would start questioning him. In that situation, Thaddeus's days would become very agonizing. With just one week, following Satoru's suggestion, Thaddeus could visit the place where all that cursed energy came from, which was the reason why there were so few people around. If he could encounter cursed spirits, Thaddeus would be more than willing to eliminate them. Therefore, since his intention is to become as strong as possible before entering the world of sorcerers and cursed spirits, he must take care of that incident and find out why no one has solved it yet. Sugisawa High School. The students attended class as usual, but the teacher's building where club activities took place was blocked by the police. The students could easily see the destroyed building, and no one knew what had happened. Cursed spirits exist in the real world, but most people don't know about them. After all, this kind of thing doesn't happen frequently, it's just an abnormal event. The school would provide the students with some rhetoric to help them get out of this strange environment. For them and all Japanese people in general, academics are the most important. In this incident, it was reported that a second-year student, Thaddeus Sato, disappeared after the accident, someone who had just transferred from another school, and this left many students stunned. Sasaki and Iguka seemed to have become quiet because of this incident, and they were also distracted for a long time after returning to school. They always thought of the tall figure standing in front of them, who protected them so they could escape. If Thaddeus hadn't been at the school that night, we might have died, right? In truth, we should have died, because of us, our classmate Thaddeus. Sasaki kept falling into guilt. The bell announcing the end of classes rang without Sasaki realizing it, but she didn't get up even after seeing her classmates leave until Iguka patted her shoulder. 1. Don't blame yourself too much. Iguka didn't know what to say to comfort Sasaki, he felt very sad and guilty too. The school classified such incidents as natural occurrences. Generally, things that cannot be explained are considered natural incidents, and no exact results can be obtained as to why they happened. Unless someone special is invited to come and investigate what happened, no one would do anything. After all, the matter is over, and someone has already assured the school that similar things will not happen again at the high school. Therefore, the school didn't delve into this matter any further. After some renovation workers were found to repair the damaged part of the teaching building, the incident ended, and it was left unspoken of. Yusagi looked at the empty stool beside her. Originally, Thaddeus sat in this position, but now it was empty. No one dared to sit in this place. Everyone was afraid of having the bad luck that fell upon Thaddeus, so Yusagi might sit alone next semester. She reached out and touched the stool, wanting to feel Thaddeus's presence, but she couldn't feel anything. It was just a consolation in her heart. 1. Thaddeus himself certainly didn't know that there were still people who cared about him at this moment. 
As dusk approached, it was time for office workers to leave work, and then he would proceed to visit that halted construction site. Thaddea stood in front of a massive building. This is a large company with a long history, which often exhibits supernatural phenomena. The purpose of coming this time is, of course, to see what supernatural thing is affecting things here and then eliminate it. Many residents around this company are aware of the events that occurred before, but they are limited to this area, and no one pays much attention to this distant place. Furthermore, Thaddea still doesn't understand why no one had taken charge of this problem when it has been affecting people in this place for a long time. Just now, Thaddeus casually asked some people and got the result he wanted. This is truly a large construction company that manages a large number of employees at all times. But no one knows exactly how things started to happen, but many employees certainly died. But the result of the forensic examination was that they died from overwork, which is a sudden death from staying up late. This result seems reasonable to everyone. After all, it is not uncommon for young people to die suddenly from staying up late at the companies they work for. Those young people who eat, drink, and have fun every day, drinking beer and having barbecues, die from staying up late. Too. And these young people who dedicate their lives to the workplace do the same. In the eyes of outsiders, this matter is not particularly spiritual. After all, staying up late and working overtime will cause death if the body can't handle it. It is the same truth as people being murdered. However, this company has too many people who die from working overtime every year, almost three or four in a month. This number is also large for a company with several thousand employees. Thaddea stood downstairs and observed for a while. As he thought, more than half an hour had passed after work hours. However, only a few people had left the company, and the rest were working overtime. Why is that? Thaddeus has to enter the company if he wants to find the truth. When he first entered the company, a strange feeling of depression arose in his heart. It seems that as you enter this building, people will feel uncomfortable. Even if he is not an employee here, he can walk around freely. The CEO of the company is very courteous to anyone who wants to see the working environment. He always wants to show the hard work of his employees to others and seems very proud of it. Among companies, these bosses admire him a lot because there are many young people who work hard to earn money. This kind of spirit is very commendable, but in Thaddeus's eyes, these people who work overtime are very sick. Well, if I can't find anything, maybe this will work. Thaddeus held a silver coin that is supposed to attract all cursed spirits in the area when it's broken. Creator's Thoughts S.R. Cuervo You can read 10 advanced chapters on my Patreon, S.R. Cuervo Chapter 15, A Strange Feeling Life tends to be very cruel to certain people. Some are not fortunate enough to feel the affection of a family, while others are burdened with debts to the world that slowly consume their lives and time. When Thaddeus entered this building and was not stopped by anyone, he realized that there was a serious problem here. Money is life, and with it, one survives. Each person can work and generate money in different ways, but there is a group of people who have to work eight hours just to buy a single piece of meat. Looking at these people with lifeless expressions on their faces, each and every one of them staring blankly at their computer screens, as if devoid of emotions, it felt worse than being a slave. And all these people keep working non-stop, even after their working hours have ended. Although Thaddeus sees it this way, he can clearly feel the dissatisfaction of each one of these individuals. Obviously, no one wants to work overtime just for the sake of it. Everyone works overtime like crazy out of necessity, leading to a psychological aversion towards it. But no matter how they feel, they all keep working. It feels strange, but it makes more sense than it seems. It's like the body needs water, but the person doesn't want to drink it, as if they are controlled by their mind, causing the body and mind to be at odds with each other. A clear example would be anger, something that in advanced stages prevents someone infected with that disease from having contact with water, even if they want to drink it. 2. Is there something I can do for you? A peaceful voice sounded, and Thaddeus turned his head to see what it was. A properly dressed man with square glasses was smiling at him. Oh, no, I'm here to visit the place. Thaddeus smiled. He had seen the sign hanging from the glasses-wearing man's neck, which said XX General Manager, and his attitude seemed to fit that of an official. The glasses-wearing manager looked Thaddeus up and down and said with an assertive smile, You should be a first-year college student, you can come to our company for an internship. See how pleasant this work environment is. The manager pointed his finger at the people working hard on overtime, showing a proud smile. But Thaddeus felt panic when he saw this man smile. He felt that none of the people here were normal. Not for now, I'm just visiting this place in case I'm interested in the future. I don't want to waste your time, so you can ignore me. Thaddeus didn't refuse but made his position clear. No wonder others think he's a college kid, he looks quite developed for his age. But that's secondary, what matters now is what's happening in this company. That's fine, you can visit this place as long as you want. If you change your mind, you can come to me anytime. The glasses-wearing manager was satisfied with Thaddeus's response, so he smiled and nodded before leaving. Thaddeus found a resting area from where he could observe the work of these employees. It's called a resting area, but no one has ever rested here, and very few people come to drink water. Thaddeus watched the time pass slowly, and the sky outside was completely dark. From 6.30 to 8 a.m., only three or four people returned home from work, while dozens of other employees continued to work overtime. This is just one of the departmental areas, and the other areas that Thaddeus believes should be similar to this one are almost filled with employees working overtime. At that moment, a middle-aged man who didn't seem to be in a good mood walked over to the resting area. Thaddeus thought he was here to take a break and leave work. Who knew he would start working overtime again right after drinking a glass of water? Wait a minute. Thaddeus shouted at this moment, and the middle-aged employee suddenly sobered up, his eyes lighting up. I don't want to work overtime anymore. I have to get out of here, and I don't want to work overtime. The middle-aged employee showed a terrified look when he was sober. His hands twisted over his face, and his expression turned crazy, his fingernails penetrating the skin of his hands, causing blood to gush out. What exactly is going on in this place? Thaddeus has already seen that these overtime conditions are not purely voluntary, but he didn't expect it to be like this. Can a person work overtime in this state? Can it still be called work? It's just being a work beast and earning money for the boss. I have to get out of here. Hurry, hurry. The middle-aged employee bit his lips, pure terror described in every part of his face. He didn't listen to Thaddeus's words and ran away from the resting area. However, something surprised Thaddeus. When the man left the resting area, his eyes clouded over again, and he walked back to his desk in an instant and started working again. At this moment, Thaddeus felt the breath of a powerful curse spirit, and a dark purple breath continued to surround the middle-aged man. It seems that there might be some action tonight. 
Thaddeus ignored the behavior of the middle-aged man for now and continued sitting in the resting area, observing what was happening in this place. Time passed quickly, and it was already past 10 o'clock at night, and there were one-third fewer people working here than at 8 o'clock. The remaining two-thirds are at least 30 years old and not in a good mood. As time passed, the resentment in this environment grew stronger, to the point where Thaddeus could even feel it. When midnight arrived, only one-third of the people remained in the office environment. The grievances of these people were the heaviest and almost reached their peak. Thaddeus no longer knew how to solve this problem. In fact, after 12 hours of work, this couldn't be considered overtime anymore, it had reached a point that couldn't be considered human. There is a green sign on the wall of the workspace that says voluntary overtime. How ironic these words are now. A cursed spirit has appeared near your position, please grant it eternal rest. Just now, Thaddeus slowly stood up. In the distance, a blue figure appeared next to the employees working overtime. Every time it passes by an employee working overtime, it opens its mouth to absorb their complaints and energy until the last person absorbed can no longer hold on and collapses directly onto the desk. Their eyes widened, cheeks sunken, pupils dilated, filled with horror and unwillingness, simply lying motionless on the keyboard without making any sound. It's no different from the employees who died here before. Even if a forensic examination is performed, it's a death caused by overwork, with no other conjectures involved. Just as the blue shadow was about to leave, Thaddeus came out holding a wooden staff, tapping the ground every two seconds. A very intelligent cursed spirit, I would never have imagined that you had a method to absorb the resentment of the employees. With hundreds or maybe thousands of employees, if you observe all their grievances, how strong will you become? Can you see me? The blue shadow turned clear but changed to purple. It was a cursed spirit in human form but had no eyes, nose, or ears, just a mouth that seemed to be sewn shut. The body was exceptionally strong, with well-defined muscular lines, and the eight-pack ABS were clearly visible. If you changed the color of its head and skin, it would be a miracle in the bodybuilding industry. Compared to the unconscious overtime workers on the side, this figure is completely like a creature from a different world. A jiu-jitsu master. The purple cursed spirit looked at Thaddeus calmly and said in a deep voice, Many sorcerers have come here, but like their predecessors, they all disappeared, so fewer and fewer jiu-jitsu masters come to this place. You are the first in the last two months. Thaddeus frowned as he heard those words, every second that passed, the cursed pressure increased. This definitely isn't a first-class cursed spirit, it's a special grade one, a powerful existence that could only belong to that group. No wonder there have been thousands of people in the company for so long. If you inhale complaints and negative energy every day, your level of growth is almost limitless. It seems that no one has dealt with you for a long time, perhaps you've been too clever to protect yourself all this time. Thaddeus originally thought he might get some benefits by coming here, but now it seems very difficult to leave without a fight. He thought it was a second or first level cursed spirit wreaking havoc in this place, he never imagined it was a special class. If a cursed spirit of this category is in this place, and no jujitsu master has been able to exorcise it, how many people have died in a month, and no one noticed? However, once a cursed spirit of this class is detected, it takes at least three or four first level jujitsu masters to deal with this kind of monster, or one of special grade, which is rare to find active. But knowing that sorcerers have been declining in recent years, not many have the abilities and time to come to this place. There are many more important things to do, and even some outright refuse to deal with such powerful entities. Well, at least I'll give it a try. A flame of determination shone in Thaddeus's eyes, and his powerful soul energy exploded in his body, suppressing the cursed energy that was slowly pushing him back. Cracks spread from where he was seated, and his sword, sealed in his wooden staff, was released, revealing a beautiful katana with a purple mage. In accordance with my duty in this world to eliminate the most powerful entities that only create evil, I condemn you to death. 3. Creator's Thoughts S.R. Cuervo You can read 14 advanced chapters on my Patreon, S.R. Cuervo Chapter 16, To the Limit Among the Jiu-Jitsu Masters I've fought, you are the youngest and most energetic, but like the others, you'll have to stay here. The purple special class cursed spirit smiled, but due to its mouth being sewn shut, the skin could be seen splitting slightly, and red blood oozed out very slowly. Of course, I'm different from the other Jiu-Jitsu Masters you've fought. If you didn't believe that, you'd underestimate me. Although Thaddeus probably couldn't fight a powerful special class spirit, he was by no means weak, and he wouldn't be at a disadvantage. He wanted to eliminate this cursed spirit, to see how far he could go with his current strength. Being a child, your security and arrogance are not insignificant. Humans only speak the truth when they are about to die, until they experience the sensation of darkness, they will be bound by pride. When the words of the purple cursed spirit finished, it disappeared instantly at a terrifying speed. Very fast. Thaddeus's face changed instantly, and his spiritual power burst to the maximum. A white bed enveloped Thaddeus's body as he held the edge of his sword in the air. 1. Facing a powerful special class cursed spirit that seemed very strong, Thaddeus didn't dare to be careless. If he didn't prepare in advance at this moment, he might not have a second chance. Peng, boom, bang. Thaddeus's pupils contracted as he felt a presence on his left side, so he immediately turned and defensively received the blow, the impact force sent him flying and crashing into several desks. If I use my power here, these people will die. Thaddeus got up. Although he managed to receive the direct blow, part of his clothing tore, and some superficial wounds started bleeding. 1. The purple cursed spirit was a little surprised. Under normal circumstances, an ordinary jiu-jitsu master would be disintegrated by his attack at this moment, but the young man in front of him actually managed to withstand it. The employees who were working late at night seemed not to have seen Thaddeus fighting the purple cursed spirit, and as if nothing had happened, they continued to work overtime. Thaddeus couldn't solve this problem while fighting such a powerful cursed spirit, but he also couldn't fight with all his strength as it would cause casualties among the humans, and he still couldn't decide which path he wanted to take. Time was running out, but evidently, he couldn't handle this phenomenon and eliminate it since, before he knew it, the purple cursed spirit rushed towards him in a matter of seconds. The speed of both figures had surpassed the level of human reaction. If I rely solely on the strength of my body, I might endure and find a way. Thaddeus reacted at this moment and swung the edge of his sword towards his enemy. Ryodan. Sever. Boom. A powerful punch wrapped in pure cursed energy clashed against the edge of a sword infused with spiritual energy, and the right arm of the purple cursed spirit split in half upon contact with Thaddeus's sword. Thaddeus used a kendo technique that involved forcefully swinging the sword downwards to cut an opponent in half. 
However, his goal was to stop the attack coming at his body at all costs. How is this possible? The purple cursed spirit showed an expression of disbelief. This simple human had cut his arm in half. Slash. Thaddeus took advantage of his recent successful attack and disappeared with his shippo. In a matter of seconds, he positioned himself behind his enemy and attacked again, but this time with a different technique that didn't require his sword. Sokutsu. Double bone. Murmured Thaddeus, and with both hands, he delivered a high-powered blow to the back of the purple cursed spirit. Two. The purple cursed spirit was expelled, crashing through several walls and landing hundreds of meters away. I knew it. Thaddeus returned to a standard fighting stance and held the hilt of his sword. It only took a few seconds for the purple cursed spirit, who had been sent flying, to get up again. Although it was wounded now, it wasn't enough to defeat it. Thaddeus didn't expect to kill such a powerful being with just two simple attacks, but after seeing how the wounds he inflicted on it disappeared, he felt that his attacks were insignificant. As expected of a full-fledged special class cursed spirit, and at that moment, Thaddeus had a certain doubt that he needed to resolve before continuing. He looked at the spirit and asked, Did you consume a special class cursed object, something like a finger of Sukuna? Ha ha ha, who told you that there are only special class cursed objects left by Sukuna? The purple cursed spirit stood up. Now, it had some understanding of the boy in front of it, and he certainly seemed to know very little. It was easy to tell that he was different from the jiu-jitsu masters it had killed, but he wasn't much stronger. I was just curious, I didn't want to leave an indescribable cursed object after killing you. You've been here for a long time, freely inhaling the resentment and negative energy expelled by those you've controlled. As the inheritor of a power beyond your comprehension, I couldn't let you continue to exist. Thaddeus felt the obligation never to back down in a battle, no matter who he was facing. If he didn't get rid of this special class cursed spirit here and now, it would be a problem for the future. 1. Young sorcerer, with your little experience, you can achieve little, and these people at work are very different from your accomplishments in this fight. You have a bright future ahead, but you've decided to bury your future here. The purple cursed spirit suddenly raised its hands and said, Domain expansion. Curse. Thaddeus's expression changed, and at the same time, he wanted to create distance and leave the building. No matter how many floors high it was, he wanted to escape the domain of this cursed spirit. 7. However, his steps halted when he saw all those people, if he retreated now, they would get hurt. So Thaddeus made a decision, something that every sorcerer had to do at some point in their life, something inevitable. To save thousands of people at the cost of sacrifices, that is the true path of a sorcerer. Thaddeus had come to understand that not everyone could be saved in this world, so to prevent others from being in danger, he decided to use all his power to bury this special class cursed spirit. Seeing the young man standing still, the purple cursed spirit wrapped him in its domain, trapping him in a different space. A tall building. Beneath Thaddeus's feet was a hard metal floor with holes, surrounded by a tall building with steel bars. Looking up, there was endless darkness. Everything around him seemed extremely tough and indestructible. Thaddeus had not expected this special class cursed spirit to launch its domain so quickly that he couldn't react even if he wanted to. If he had known, he would have mentioned it to Gojo Satoru when he visited. Well, I hope this place can't withstand all my power. Although Thaddeus had a hidden power he had never unleashed, it didn't mean he considered himself invincible. Most of the time, if he wasn't careful in his process of becoming stronger, he would face this kind of restriction. Now that Thaddeus had made a decision, he would give his all to eliminate this existence, regardless of the outcome. Originally, Thaddeus wanted to go to a jiu-jitsu school to learn new things about cursed spirits and how to avoid certain traps or problems. He believed that by joining a school, he could eliminate cursed spirits according to his combat power and thus increase his strength progressively. But now, he was fighting a special class cursed spirit. To be honest, he didn't want to reveal his power so quickly and wasn't sure if he could eliminate special class cursed spirits. However, he had no intention of escaping as that would disappoint Yamamoto's will when he inherited this power from him. He was very proud to be worthy of possessing this strength, so he would honor the man he considered his master, even though they had never met. It's midnight. No one can save you here. You will die in this place. The purple cursed spirit waved its hand, and the steel bars shot out from the tall building towards Thaddeus. Thaddeus quickly dodged, using a combination of his endurance, speed, and shunpo to evade, but he soon realized that the attacks were heading towards his dissection no matter where he moved. Is this what you call your domain? Thaddeus's face was cold with each of his defensive maneuvers. After receiving numerous blows, his body was covered in superficial wounds, giving him the appearance of losing. Can the fire of my shikai melt these metal bars? Thaddeus didn't care anymore. Since the opponent could easily manipulate the steel bars and attack him, he was certainly confident in his power. 5. Although he was confident that his power was truly powerful, there was always that doubt in his mind, which was understandable since he had never fully unleashed his power. 1. The attacks quickly rushed in all directions towards Thaddeus, and in response, his speed increased further. His speed reached its extreme, and in just a few seconds, he had closed the distance with the purple cursed spirit. Boom, boom, boom. Suddenly, rows of reinforced walls emerged from the ground, blocking Thaddeus's path and separating him from the purple cursed spirit. Even if you believe yourself invincible in your domain, I will show you my true power. Swinging his sword, Thaddeus murmured with extreme coldness. Reduce all creation to ash, Raijin Jaka. 7. Boom. The reinforced metal wall in front of Thaddeus was quickly melted by the high temperatures, and in the blink of an eye, seconds seemed to slow down as the fire began to spread throughout the building without being extinguished. Creator's Thoughts. SR Cuervo. You can read 14 advanced chapters on my Patreon, SR Cuervo. Chapter 17. Reduce everything to ashes. Reduce all of creation to ashes. Shikai. Ryajin Jaka. Ascend. When Thaddeus released the Shikai of his Ryajin Jaka, the flames emerged with impressive strength and ferocity. From the edge of the weapon, the fire spread rapidly, creating a torrent of flames that extended all around. The intense heat spread suddenly. Oh. Although the cursed spirit had seen Thaddeus unleash that fire from his sword, it believed it was nothing significant. But in just a few seconds, this power became terrifying, and the cursed spirit withdrew upon witnessing it. However, the immense amount of heat made it feel as if it were being burned. Even someone 200 meters away would find it unbearable to resist that power. Thaddeus not only released his Shikai but also exploded his spiritual energy to a level on PAR or even stronger than the special class cursed spirit, leaving a strong impression on the spirit, which had believed it was winning. The surroundings of Thaddeus did not turn to ashes as there were no common objects around, but the steel beneath his feet started to melt, making his steps tread on molten metal. 1. 
With this simple release of his Shikai, the course of the battle changed entirely. The act of releasing those flames alone was impressive. The flames were of an intense red and orange color, as if fueled by sheer rage. They rose in burning spirals and formed a fiery aura around Raijin Jaka, expanding as Thaddeus attacked. Boom! At the moment the blade of the sword clashed against the steel wall, it melted at a rapid speed, and the purple cursed spirit's expression filled with disbelief. Feeling the power of the heat, the purple cursed spirit, who had seen how the heat had melted the metal wall, immediately launched an attack. A cursed sorcerer, I will bury you in this place, and no one will be able to collect your corpse. Boom! An enormous amount of pure cursed energy erupted from the mouth of the purple cursed spirit, the seams of its mouth released, and a powerful projection aimed towards Thaddeus. If this attack had been directed towards the building they were in before, it would have been utterly destroyed. At the same time, Thaddeus, holding the sword with one hand, had his eyes shine scarlet. Teimatsu. With a swing of his sword, the flames roared with uncontrollable fury, crackling and sizzling with scorching heat toward the purple cursed spirit. Seeing this scene, the cursed spirit felt terror, this level of power was something no ordinary flame could achieve. The surroundings where its attack was directed melted, making the area unsuitable for its control. That enormous torrent of flames forced the purple cursed spirit to retreat. It had already retreated to a great distance and reached a point where there was no more room to retreat, so it filled its body with cursed energy and attacked the incoming flames. Boom! An enormous amount of cursed energy exploded, appearing more like a thick purple mist, and it directly collided with the flames. This was the strongest attack after releasing its domain. The purple mist reformed into an arrow and appeared in front of the flames, but the cursed energy clashed against the flames, resulting in a fierce explosion. However, as if a large weighty net was thrown into the water, Thaddeus flames enveloped the cursed spirit's attack. RRRR. The cursed spirit cried out as it saw its energy being suppressed by the flames. At that moment, the cursed energy began to cut through the flames, but Thaddeus handled it before it could proceed. The cursed spirit, witnessing the scene, felt fear for the first time. Even its powerful attack infused with pure cursed energy was burned by such terrible flames. Thaddeus looked around and was impressed that such a terrifying power was hidden within him. Each tongue of fire seemed to have a life of its own, dancing and writhing in the air with fiery energy. As the flames were unleashed, they consumed everything in their path. The entire steel building was being devoured by the flames, progressively destroying the cursed spirit's domain. The aura of heat accompanying the flames was palpable, making the air suffocating and difficult to breathe. The temperature in the surroundings rose rapidly as the fire spread, turning the environment into a scorching furnace. Creator's Thoughts S.R. Cuervo You can read 14 advanced chapters on my Patreon, S.R. Cuervo Chapter 18, All the Strength in One Place Seeing the monstrous flames approaching him, the purple cursed spirit could only gather all of its cursed energy in its pure state and attack with all its power to defend itself. Afterward, the purple cursed spirit used its last bit of effort to concentrate its cursed energy at the center of the flames, managing to finally split the unstoppable attack that was coming at it. The flames separated, flying towards both sides, making the heat even more intense. Boom! The melted steel descended from the height of the metal building, illuminating the surroundings, giving the domain a sensation of being in the sun itself. The steel was gradually melting, and at this rate, the place could collapse at any moment. As if the building was generating massive flame explosions on its own, the purple cursed spirit could barely part the flames, even with its enormous amount of cursed energy. Its weakness, which it had never encountered before, was exposed in its eyes, and it could see how its powerful domain was being melted away. Even with its powerful physique, if the flames were not somehow extinguished, it would end up incinerated in the sea of fire. The cursed spirit's skin began to burn, emitting vapor, and its metal weapons reduced to mere melted steel, its arrogance severely shattered. It looked around as its domain was destroyed. Can flames reach this level? Ordinary flames, of course, cannot reach such a level, but the flames hidden in my sword can reach the temperature of the sun. 1. The temperature of the sun is around 6,000 degrees. 12. Such flames, if they were of that level, would undoubtedly melt steel and turn it into ashes, just like what was happening in this place. There are very few things in the world that can withstand that temperature. If Thaddeus has discovered one disadvantage in his power, it would be that it is so powerful that the damage cannot be controlled. Of course, he knew where this power came from, and now he understood why Yamamoto did not use this power much. The same concerns he had now were the ones that Yamamoto had, that the damage was so great that he couldn't distinguish between friends or foes. 1. It can't be. The purple cursed spirit, who believed it had been at the peak of its world, had been defeated by a mere child. Although it hadn't lost the ability to fight, this scene left it immobile. Die. Thaddeus shouted as he used his maximum speed to reach the side of the cursed spirit. Now, there was nothing that could stop him, so his priority was to eliminate this cursed spirit completely. Sword technique, Ryodan. With the movement of the flames, Thaddeus attacked without a moment of hesitation, not caring about receiving some damage. The domain in which they were collapsed, so this was his chance to finish off his enemy. You won't defeat me without receiving my final attack. The purple cursed spirit prepared itself, placing its hands on the ground, and a tube shot out from behind its back towards Thaddeus. But this was Thaddeus' opportunity to eliminate his enemy, so without worrying about taking some damage, he attacked. Boom! The flames and cursed energy exploded, creating an impact that completely destroyed the domain they were in, and once they appeared in the building, it was completely devastated. Boom! Thaddeus' sword blade cut the purple cursed spirit in half, but he did not come out unscathed as some kind of spike had pierced his leg. Nevertheless, with the adrenaline of battle still coursing through his veins, he saw the purple cursed spirit being consumed by the flames. Cough! Cough! Thaddeus lowered his gaze and saw the wound on his leg. Fortunately, the battle hadn't resulted in something worse, but his body was exhausted. He had prolonged the battle and engaged in close combat, leaving him far below his normal state. You have killed a weakened first class spirit and gained 6,000 soul points. 5. Fight with honor and bleed in battle, you have obtained the mark of a fire demon, your flames increase in power and intensity, and you gain the ability to release flames in small amounts without using your shikai. 1. At this moment, as Thaddeus lost consciousness, he heard a broken sound, and a light appeared, but by this time, he had already fainted. 3. Thaddeus didn't know how much time had passed, but when he opened his eyes, he was already back in his home. 
He was in pain at the moment, as if every part of his body was about to collapse. Are you awake? A gentle voice sounded in the room, and Thaddeus's eyes, still blurry, began to focus. It was only then that he saw Gojo Satoru sitting at the side. What happened? Thaddeus sat up on his bed, feeling somewhat confused. He looked at his sword lying beside him and his right hand wrapped in bandages, and then remembered the battle where he had faced a special class cursed spirit. Gojo Satoru rubbed his chin and looked at Thaddeus significantly. It hasn't been long since I met you, but I didn't expect you to be so brave and strong as to face a special class cursed spirit. How did you become so powerful? 3. Thaddeus, though feeling his body screaming in pain, thought for a moment about how to answer, but knowing that this question would come sooner or later, he responded with the truth. What was the outcome of the fight? Thaddeus asked, concerned, wanting to know if that special class cursed spirit really died. You killed it. What do you think the reaction of those old folks in the magical world will be when they find out that a 16 to 15 year old kid killed a special class cursed spirit? Gojo Satoru smiled with excitement, eager to hear the young Thaddeus words. I hope you can keep this a secret. The person who trained me said that I hold a great power in my soul and that I'm different from others. His name was Yamamoto, and he taught me many techniques before he disappeared and left me his sword. 15. Thaddeus took his sword, Ryujin Jaka, and placed it on his legs. This sword was handed down to me by my master. He said I couldn't reveal my power until I was strong enough to defeat a special class cursed spirit without any problem. After hearing this story, Gojo Satoru was not impressed, although he didn't know anyone named Yamamoto. Thaddeus' power was not impressive but more potent than others. There was that old Zian family member who used fire in his sword, but comparing the flames he saw with those of the elder, they were not at all similar. 3. He had seen Thaddeus wounds all over his body and knew that he had fought hand-to-hand -hand combat first because he didn't want losses in the collision of his battle with that cursed spirit, which spoke highly of the young man. Well, your story is as special as the energy you wield. I'm really intrigued. Gojo Satoru, with his six-eyes ability, could feel and see that the spiritual energy Thaddeus wielded was different, so he thought it might be something hereditary. By the way, Mr. Gojo, how did you bring me back? Thaddeus was thoughtful about this, wondering if he was being observed from the beginning in the first place. Creator's Thoughts SR Cuervo You can read 14 advanced chapters on my Patreon, SR Cuervo Chapter 19, Destination Tokyo 4 Not that impressive, suddenly I felt the breath of a powerful cursed spirit of special grade and thought about taking charge. But knowing that problems could pile up and realizing you lived nearby, I wanted to come and see if things were really problematic. Ha ha ha, but what I saw was impressive. If I had arrived a few minutes later, innocent people would have died, and I wouldn't have been able to get you out of there. Finishing saying that, Gojo Satoru stood up and pointed to food and more bandages on the table. I already bought you food, and I also got bandages you should use. By the way, remember to repay me this favor when you have money. At this point, Thaddeus was impressed, but after hearing what Gojo Satoru said about repaying the favor when he had money, his gratitude diminished on several levels. Although you can call me Mr. Gojo, from now on, I'd like to hear the name Master Gojo. I really don't know how much time you will need, but I believe you'll officially become a special grade sorcerer soon. Well, you can recover and come to Tokyo in a few days. Gojo Satoru smiled and opened the door to leave. 6. Thank you, Master Gojo. Thaddeus respected people greatly, and his respect for the strong was even greater. He wanted to get up, but the pain in his body made him abandon that idea and return to bed. Only at this moment did he realize that his leg had been bandaged, his right arm was similarly bandaged, and as for other parts of his body, apart from bruising with blood, he was more or less fine. Well, it was a special grade spirit. Thaddeus sighed at how that battle unfolded. That spirit was truly powerful, but to his surprise, the power of his sword proved effective in controlling his enemy. After Gojo Satoru intervened, as he had mentioned, he saved the people in that building before it collapsed or suffered severe damage. But that voice he heard at the end gave him a slight shiver, thinking that someone else was observing his battle. By the time I'm in Tokyo, I should be completely healed. Thaddeus smiled with a pained expression, his body really couldn't handle moving. 1. Suddenly, Thaddeus' right arm began to heat up to the point where he needed to remove the bandage. A red mark appeared on sight, extending down his arm as if it had a life of its own. What's happening now? The lines of flames moved up to his right shoulder, and a kind of white vapor began to emerge from it. Eventually, his right shoulder was marked with some kind of thin lines extending downward. The shape seemed to be a kind of thin cap with many leaves, but the lines appeared much thinner. 6. Is that the mark of the fire demon? Thaddeus hadn't anticipated this, but now that it stabilized in his body, he hoped the consequences wouldn't be negative at all. 1. In some way, since his body was screaming in pain and he couldn't do anything else, he turned off the light and rested, opening his panel and planning to use those 6,000 soul points. First of all, he upgraded his Shikai to level 9, a level of mastery and power much stronger than what he had in the fight with the special grade cursed spirit, and all his abilities once his Shikai was released were leveled up to level 3. 1. Something that intrigued Thaddeus was his level of magic or, in other words, Keto, which was his talent for learning cursed spells. Since he had the book with the 99 spells that couldn't be learned with soul points, he upgraded his talent and ability to level 3. On the other hand, he upgraded his combat style to level 5, and with that, he had spent 6,000 soul points, leaving his statistics with the following numbers. Name, Thaddeus Sato. General Attributes. Strength, level 70 slash 1300. Speed, level 7 1190 slash 1300. Endurance, level 60 slash 1100. Spirit, level 90 slash 1900. Zenjutsu, Sword Art, Skill Level, Level 40 slash 700. Hakuta, Hand to Hand Combat, Skill Level, Level 50 slash 900. Hoho, Movement and Speed, Skill Level, Level 50 slash 900. Kidu, Magic, Skill Level, Level 30 slash 700. Zanpakuto Name, Ryajim Jaka. 1. Zanpakuto Type, Fire Zanpakuto. Shikai Release Ability, The Ability of Ryajin Jaka's Shikai is called Anetsujigoku, Flames of Hell. 
When activated, the flames of Raya Jinjaka intensify and envelop the entire surrounding area. These flames are extremely hot and practically indestructible, capable of burning anything they touch. Additionally, the heat generated by the flames is enough to melt steel and reduce it to ashes. Abilities once Shikai is released. Ability, Jokaku Injo, Burning Fortress. Level, 30-700. Description, the flames of Raya Jinjaka create a gigantic wall of fire that is used to keep one or several targets captive for an unspecified amount of time. Ability, Teimatsu, Torch. Level, 30-700. Description, this ability can create a great inferno with the simple movement of Raijin Jaka. The fire generated by the attack consumes everything trapped within the flames until nothing but ashes remains. The flames created by Raijin Jaka can be controlled with great precision by Yamamoto to attack only the chosen targets, and he also has power over the intensity of the flames. Ability, Enetsu Jigoku, Flames of Hell. Level, 40-900. Description, this technique involves releasing gigantic columns of fire over a specific area. The purpose of Enetsu Jigoku is to enclose the target within that hell and destroy it completely. Even if it means immolating the attacker, the victim, and everything within the perimeter of the technique. Shikai Skill Level, Level, 80-1700. 2. Bankai Release Ability, Ryujin Jaka's Bankai is called Zenka no Tachi, Sun's Incineration. With this final release, Yamamoto unleashes the true destructive power of his Senpakito. The Bankai envelopes his sword in even more intense flames and creates a burning aura around his body. In this state, Yamamoto can control and manipulate fire freely, allowing him to launch powerful and devastating attacks. 3. Bankai Skill Level, Level 0 Slash Sealed. Cursed Level. Cursed Level Description, Level 2 300 slash 500. 1. Additional abilities or powers obtained at the Cursed Level, 0. Items. Hollow and Cursed Spirit Bait, 1 single use. Bakudo Book. Description, a book with the 99 facts of Kido. These cannot be learned with soul points, they can only be learned through the hard work of an apprentice. Souls sent to eternal rest, 2960 souls. Cursed Spirit Souls 95. Soul points, 34. 1. In the following days, Thaddeus could move much more, but it was minimal. He suffered a lot to complete his daily needs, but at least he had the strength to do so. After finishing his daily tasks, he spent his days in bed, learning a spell that was very complicated to master. During his rest, he used his cell phone, exposing himself to a lot of information. There were also many supernatural incidents happening in foreign countries. Not only in the United States but also in European countries. Thaddeus didn't know how things were handled in those places. The next day, Thaddeus bandaged his shoulder as the mark that now looked like a tattoo could attract unwanted attention. His knuckles were still bruised and in the process of healing. Although he was still injured, he needed to depart today. Besides, it should be the special meeting Gojo Satoru mentioned. After a few hours, Thaddeus was already seated on a high-speed train. Many people paid special attention to his body. Although he was considered handsome by certain standards, the reason everyone was staring was because of all the bandages and wounds on his face. Thaddeus didn't mind the looks, he was currently studying the book and relearning the fundamentals of the spell he was trying to master. The distance from Sendai to Tokyo wasn't very far, so Thaddeus arrived at his destination soon. Additionally, once he reached this meeting point, he could go to the Tokyo Jiu-Jitsu school. The time is approaching. Why hasn't the person you mentioned arrived yet? Fushiguro Megami leaned against the wall, surrounded by pedestrians, while Gojo Satoru stood nearby, observing. 1. Well, don't be too hard on him, he was severely injured not long ago. Please treat him kindly, Gojo Satoru smiled slightly and suddenly pointed to a figure walking with a cane in the distance among the crowd. Isn't that him? Megami, who heard his teacher's words, looked up and saw a tall, handsome boy walking towards their location while holding a cane. The reason he could recognize him at first glance was mainly because the bandages on his body were too eye-catching. Hello, everyone. Thaddeus courteously greeted everyone with his less injured hand raised. Come on, greet your classmate, Gojo Satoru looked at Thaddeus. Oh, sure, hi, my name is Thaddeus, I'm 16 years old. I hope we can be good classmates. Thaddeus extended his bandaged hand and looked Megami in the eyes. After some consideration, he decided to switch to his other hand. Megami was taken aback for a moment. Thaddeus, weren't you the first year transfer student who supposedly died? Two, that's right. Megami understood. Since Thaddeus appeared here, it meant that Thaddeus had cursed energy to learn jiu-jitsu, so he must have fought cursed spirits that day. But it was indeed strange that two people from the same incident suddenly became classmates. Are you okay? Megami extended his hand and shook Thaddeus' hand briefly. His approach might have been a bit abrupt, but since it was their first meeting, it was fine. Haha, I'm fine. It's just some minor injuries that haven't fully healed yet. Thaddeus smiled awkwardly. It was more than just minor injuries, his bones were nearly crushed. On the other hand, Megami believed that Thaddeus' injuries were caused by those cursed spirits that were attracted to the special grade cursed object at the school. He was also injured at that time, but he had almost fully recovered after a week. This showed that Thaddeus' strength might be mediocre, perhaps just reaching the threshold of the jiu-jitsu division. 1. Of course, Thaddeus didn't know what Megami was thinking. He didn't need to boast about his own strength to everyone. After all, he had defeated a special grade cursed spirit himself. Why hasn't that guy Itadori arrived yet? Megami noticed that Thaddeus wasn't the last to arrive, Itadori was the last one. I'm here. As if summoned by a spell, Itadori had arrived just at that moment. Sorry for being late. Itadori scratched his head and apologized. When he saw Thaddeus standing next to Gojo Satoru, he was stunned. You, Thaddeus, weren't you supposed to be dead? Ha ha ha, I don't die so easily. I'm alive and well. Thaddeus wanted to pat his chest, but when he remembered that he was still injured, he gave up the idea. 2. I was really scared for you. The school issued a notice saying you disappeared in an accident. Everyone thought you died, but here you are, alive and kicking. That's really cool. Itadori approached Thaddeus and looked him up and down, as if he still couldn't believe what he was seeing. There wasn't much of a relationship between the two of them, but Itadori was happy that Thaddeus was alive. But then again, why are you here? Itadori looked at Gojo Satoru and Fushiguro Megami strangely, and Thaddeus looked a bit strange even among them. Oh, like you, he's a classmate about to join the Jiu-Jitsu high school. Now that you know, let's avoid future introductions, Gojo Satoru opened his hands and pointed. Itadori is a vessel for Sakuna, someone very special. Being Sakuna's vessel makes him much more special than a special grade cursed spirit. 1. Oh, that's impressive. 
Thaddeus nodded, pretending, and Gojo Satoru applauded. Very well, now that everyone is here, let's go. Are we all here? Thaddeus asked casually. If he remembered correctly, Nobara should be joining their class. Is there a problem? Gojo Satoru turned his head and looked at Thaddeus. Then he remembered something and said, Oh, there's one more, but she won't be here until tomorrow. Let's go first. Yes. Itadori shouted with enthusiasm. The number of students is quite small, isn't it? Thaddeus murmured, to which Megami responded, That's normal, not everyone has the ability to handle cursed energy. Creator's thoughts. SR Cuervo. You can read 16 advanced chapters on my Patreon, SR Cuervo. Chapter 20. Tokyo is a very big place. Tokyo is very large and has a thriving economy, but the suburbs are also populated. The Jiu-Jitsu school is located on the outskirts of these suburbs and seems to be a suitable place for a sorcery school. 1. The three first-year students walked alongside Gojo Satoru on a mountain trail that began from the suburbs. Although it can be a crowded place, there are certain special paths separated from vehicles. The surroundings feel very pleasant as there are vast forests surrounding this place, and the air is very fresh. Undoubtedly, it's a good place to live without any disturbances. It's really deep in the mountains, is this really Tokyo? Itadori stopped and picked up a rock from the ground, then gazed at the truly massive forest. Gojo Satoru said as he walked, the suburbs of Tokyo are also like this. It feels a bit strange not to see a car moving around in this place. Thaddeus was a bit stunned, having been in Tokyo for just a few hours. As students, you must think that things are similar to the human world, don't you? Gojo Satoru had heard Thaddeus's words about there being few first-year students, so he said, Tokyo Prefectural Jiu-Jitsu High School is one of the only two jiu-jitsu educational facilities in Japan dedicated to nurturing the next generation of jiu-jitsu sorcerers. For ordinary people, this is just a facility they know very little about. Of course, it is nearly impossible for ordinary people to enter these places. Gojo stopped and said, Tokyo Jiu-Jitsu High serves not only as a training ground for the next generation of sorcerers but also as the headquarters for all alumni who have graduated to become full-fledged jiu-jitsu sorcerers. Gojo Satoru continued walking, and the four soon arrived at the Jiu-Jitsu High. Itadori, you must first talk to the director, and you, Thaddeus, may also be denied admission. So you have to work hard to fit into this world. Gojo Satoru led them to a tall building. At this moment, Megami said, I won't go in. After speaking, he left directly, seeming to be heading back to his dormitory. Don't worry, that's just how he is. Gojo Satoru clapped his hands and then pushed Thaddeus and Itadori while saying, Go ahead, guys, good luck. Thaddeus thought he might be able to enroll directly in the school, but upon further consideration, it's impossible. After all, he is still a complete stranger who suddenly displayed enough power to defeat a special grade curse. It won't be easy to be selected as a first-year student. What? So you're not the leader of this place, there should only be the hierarchy of the strongest. Suddenly, Sukuna's voice sounded, and Itadori immediately slapped his face, silencing that voice. Sorry, master, he occasionally appears. Itadori didn't know how to solve this problem, it was quite troublesome. 2. Gojo Satoru thought Itadori was possessed again. It turned out Sukuna was just speaking, and Itadori had control over his body. Your body is really interesting. 1. Once I take over this boy, surely you will be the first to die. Then, I'll kill the boy next to you. Sukuna's voice sounded again, this time from the back of Itadori's hand, and his voice was chilling. Yes, that stupid looking boy will die. 3. Thaddeus, what did I do? Hey, Fossil, why would I kill you for no reason? Thaddeus froze upon receiving a death threat in person. It was the first time he met Itadori, who was possessed by Sukuna, but that Fossil wanted to kill him when he took over Itadori's body. Kid, do you think I don't sense that disgusting energy in your body? If you want to eliminate stronger cursed spirits, you'll definitely have to face me. Sukuna's words made Thaddeus's heart tighten. Could that thing read his mind? 1. It's an honor to be remembered by Sukuna, Thaddeus, you better be careful. Gojo Satoru didn't ask Thaddeus about his purpose. In theory, Sukuna is a person from a thousand years ago, so maybe it has something to do with the different energy Thaddeus possesses. I will. Thaddeus knows Sukuna's strength very well, but now Itadori only has two fingers on his body. In this way, Sukuna's strength might be comparable to a special grade cursed spirit. This guy is famous. Itadori patted the back of his hand, making Sukuna unable to speak. Sukuna is a four-handed, two-faced deity, but he actually existed as a person, though that was over a thousand years ago. Gojo Satoru introduced the story and said, in the time of sorcery, many sorcerers gathered to confront him. Once named Sukuna, not even his corpse could be destroyed, becoming a cursed object. Undoubtedly, he is the king of curses. 3. Then, master, who is stronger, you or him? Itadori asked, carried away by the moment. Thaddeus stood aside and pondered this problem. Sukuna would be unimaginable at his peak, but Gojo Satoru is also terrifying, and the outcome of this fight may be difficult if they were to fight fairly. 5. Well, Gojo Satoru rubbed his chin and said, if Sukuna regains all his power, it would be a bit difficult. Will you lose? Itadori asked directly. Gojo Satoru stepped forward and said decisively, I would defeat him. 9. It might be so if the fight is fair, but Sukuna is a cursed spirit, and fighting fairly is not clever on his part. Thaddeus smiled and entered the building with the others. This building has a large space but a retro style. It is surrounded by wooden pillars, and there are flickering candles on the load-bearing pillars. You're late, Satoru, eight minutes late. The man inside spoke, the door behind them closed, and the surrounding environment became darker. It's not that I'll scold you so much, but I've told you a thousand times to correct that bad habit. This middle-aged man was sitting at the top of the open space. There are many puppet-like objects around him, which look strange and cute. Why make such a fuss? Stop nagging me. Eight minutes late is nothing. Besides, you're making dolls. After Gojo Satoru finished speaking, he looked at Thaddeus and Itadori. This is Director Yagamasamichi. Satoru, which of these two kids is the vessel? Director Yagamasamichi looked very stern with those sunglasses. Oh, this one here. Gojo Satoru pushed Itadori on the shoulder. Itadori received a push, so he immediately bowed and said, My name is Itadori Yuji, I like girls like Jennifer Lawrence, pleased to meet you. 10. 
Thaddeus felt really uncomfortable. This guy even dared to tell the director of this school what type of woman he likes. In normal situations, this kind of thing would be really strange. Who's the other one? Director Yagamasamichi didn't know another person was coming. Oh, I forgot to introduce him. Just as Gojo Satoru wanted to introduce, Thaddeus spoke first. My name is Thaddeus. I don't have any particular preferences for women as long as they're not older than 49, but there are too many actresses that come to mind, so out of respect for all of them, I won't name any. 6. You'll talk later, I'll ask him first. Director Yagamasamichi felt that this Thaddeus is familiar to him, so he wanted to talk to Sakuna's vessel first. Ah, uh, okay. Thaddeus realized he had been too straightforward. If director Yagamasamichi hadn't interrupted, he could have named at least a dozen actresses from around the world. But Itadori looked at Thaddeus as if he found a kindred spirit. Turns out, they might have the same taste. 2. What are you doing here? Director Yagamasamichi asked while looking at Itadori Yuji. Eh, an interview. Itadori returned to reality and looked at director Yagamasamichi. For a sorcery school. To study jujitsu. Itadori replied. Besides that, what will you do once you've learned about curses and how to eliminate them? What will I do? Itadori hesitated a bit and said, Well, what I'll do is collect Sukuna's fingers. It would be dangerous if they're left wandering around. Creator's Thoughts. S.R. Cuervo. You can read 16 advanced chapters on my Patreon, S.R. Cuervo. Chapter 21, My Way. Why? Director Yagamasamichi asked sternly, but his expressionless face made people who looked at him feel nervous. Crimes, accidents, diseases every day, people you don't know die. So, if it's related to a cursed spirit, do you find the need to intervene? After hearing these words, Itadori said, those are someone's final words, who cares about the details? I just want to save people. Final words. Director Yagamasamichi said weakly, so you're willing to fight cursed spirits just because someone told you to? You failed. Director Yagamasamichi stood up and raised his right hand. At that moment, a doll sitting below him stood up, and its expression turned fierce. Isn't that, a doll? Itadori curiously looked at the green doll next to Director Yagamasamichi. They are cursed corpses, dolls, but they are connected with my curses. Director Yagamasamichi waved his hand, and the chubby doll attacked Itadori. 1. Thaddeus immediately stepped back a bit when he saw the intentions of this test. He didn't want to get involved. Although this type of cursed spirit wasn't a problem for him, he was still injured. Itadori, on the other hand, wasn't as lucky. This doll was so fast that in just a few seconds, it was in front of him and hit Itadori with a simple punch. Itadori was a little nervous about the sudden attack. Although he used his backpack to block the attack from this formerly cute doll, the force was so strong that it sent him flying into a wooden post. Is this really a doll? Itadori smiled and got up. The doll in front of him felt like a human, with completely human expressions and actions. After the cursed corpse fell to the ground, it started to dance, moving its hands as if mocking Itadori, demonstrating its strength. Human nature emerges in desperate situations. I will continue attacking until I hear the answers I want to hear. Director Yagamasamichi finished speaking and waited for Itadori to say what he wanted to hear. First of all, it wasn't just anyone's request, it came from a member of my family. Itadori suddenly stood up and rushed towards the doll, hitting it in the face and smashing it directly into the wall. But the doll started hitting wooden posts, bouncing faster and faster. As the seconds passed, the cursed spirit controlling the doll bounced back and forth but never touched the ground. In the end, it turned directly into a shadow, and all the candles around it went out. The light in the hallway dimmed instantly, while the cursed spirit continued to stalk Itadori. Damn it, where is it? Itadori couldn't see where the cursed spirit was and looked around desperately. At that moment, the doll kicked him directly from behind, causing him to hit the wooden post again. Even family members are considered someone else in this situation. A jiu-jitsu sorcerer is always dealing with death, and that includes not only your own death but also the deaths of others killed by cursed spirits. There are times when you have to tear apart a cursed spirit's flesh while the dead are barely out of your line of sight. This kind of work requires some madness and strong motivation, and you do it just because someone else told you. Director Yagamasamichi lit the extinguished candle as he spoke, not just for Itadori but also for Thaddeus who was listening. Suddenly, he changed the topic and said loudly, what a dim joke. I could have understood if you had told me you wanted to delay your death sentence. Are you playing with me? I, let me ask you, if a cursed spirit kills you, will you blame your grandfather? Director Yagamasamichi pointed at Itadori condescendingly. Itadori was stunned for a moment, and his expression became a bit inexplicable. You, what you say is really unpleasant. 3. Education challenges students to awaken and touch their sore spots. Yagamasamichi touched his short beard. Thaddeus, on the side, was enjoying this moment. He only remembers general things about this world, but what he's seeing now is a truly intriguing story. Itadori lowered his head and said directly, I won't. Boom. Before he could finish his words, the doll appeared directly in front of him. An uppercut turned Itadori 360 degrees and threw him to the ground. It's hard to imagine your mental state when you're dying, but I'm sure of this if you continue like this, you'll end up cursing your own beloved grandfather. No jiu-jitsu sorcerer can die without regrets. Let me ask you again, why did you sell the jiu-jitsu school? 8. Yagamasamika's words stayed in Itadori's heart, but the cursed spirit approached again, raising its fist and preparing to hit his face again. Itadori suddenly straightened up and rushed toward the doll. The doll couldn't change direction in the air, but Itadori threw it. After the doll fell to the ground, Itadori's legs were wrapped around its stomach, and his hands controlled its neck, so it was under his control. At that moment, Itadori looked at Yagamasamichi and said, Only I can consume Sakuna. Even if it could avoid my death sentence, if I run away from my duty, I'll eat, bathe, and read comics. But when I disconnect from my tastes, I'll be depressed thinking that someone else is dying because of Sukuna. Am I supposed to convince myself that it has nothing to do with me and that it's not my fault? 1. Itadori said firmly, I don't want that. Though I don't know what will happen when I die, I don't want to regret how I lived. Director Yagamasamichi fell silent for a moment after hearing Itadori's words, then looked at Thaddeus. And what about you? 
Me. Thaddeus stepped aside and was surprised. Why did their words affect him again? But since he's here, he naturally has to provide some answers, otherwise, how could he join the jiu-jitsu school? Gojo Satoru looked at director Yagama Samichi. He knew Itadori must have passed the test. As for Thaddeus, he was sure someone like him had been accepted, as he even fought a powerful threat face to face even on the brink of death. I'm not anyone special, but I want to leave my mark on this world. My experience is different from Itadori's, but when I was a child, I remember a cursed spirit killing them, but for some reason, it left me alive. Now I have the power to fight against any cursed spirit, so I've come to this place to be taught the right path I should take in my fight against cursed spirits. 1. Thaddeus really didn't have a grand purpose, just to eliminate cursed spirits and somehow create a division between the human and non-human world, so he said, I have the strength to make a change, so I want to move forward and see how far I can go in the future. As for my death, I've been on the brink of death several times, and the only thing I regret is not being stronger. I want to become stronger and help innocent people in some way. 3. After Thaddeus finished speaking, the scene fell silent. After a while, Gojo Satoru looked meaningfully at Thaddeus, interesting. Someone really wants to become stronger, and that truly caught his attention. Are you joking right now? Do you have the strength to fight against any cursed spirit? If you think any kind of person can enter this school, then you must prove your worth. Thaddeus' tone was too arrogant, somewhat despising the sorcerers who died with regrets. Just as director Yagamasamichi wanted Thaddeus to leave, the staff he was holding was released from its sealed state. 2. Oh. Gojo Satoru looked at Thaddeus curiously. He also wanted to know more about Thaddeus' strength and fighting style, as he personally defeated a special grade cursed spirit, so his power must be strong enough to do so. 2. Creator's Thoughts. S.R. Cuervo. You can read 16 advanced chapters on my Patreon, S.R. Cuervo. Chapter 22. Thaddeus' Words. In the room where the candles trembled, a strong spiritual pressure suddenly erupted, cracking the wooden floor, but it was immediately contained. Thaddeus, holding his sword, unsheathed it, and the blade ignited instantly. This time, he didn't release his shikai, instead, it was due to the mark of the fire demon that granted him the ability to control flames. Thus, when Thaddeus' spiritual energy exploded, the flames did too, but soon they were contained within the blade's edge. Then, in the eyes of everyone, the blade's edge was filled with a deep intent of death, giving them the impression that this simple sword had taken the lives of thousands of beings. This could be considered Thaddeus' cursed energy ability, something unrelated to his spiritual energy but granting him a certainly advantageous power. What is this? Itadori looked at Thaddeus in surprise. How beautiful that sword looks. A sword infused with cursed energy? That's something ordinary people cannot do, or most people could never do. But these flames are not the ones I felt before, they are much less powerful and intense. His lineage must be special, and whoever trained him as well. Gojo Satoru wiped the sand off himself. He was indeed proud of Thaddeus. Now, director Yagamasamichi understood why Thaddeus spoke with such arrogance. He had the capital to be arrogant. Becoming a jiu-jitsu master also depended on talent and bloodline. Obviously, Thaddeus was one of them. 1. You are young and energetic, but it doesn't solely depend on strength. Once you are outside, you must think about who you are and what your impulses are. The director didn't continue pushing Thaddeus away. Powerful jiu-jitsu masters were scarce in these times, and Thaddeus's talent and strength were certainly impressive. He could go far in the future. If it's the path he really wants to take, he might become one of the strongest special grade sorcerers in no time. Although the possibility of surpassing Gojo Satoru was very small, it wasn't impossible. It would take time to witness his progress. 2. I understand. Thaddeus nodded and seemed a bit serious. What I said earlier might have been exaggerated, but I have already fought incredibly powerful cursed spirits. Since I can remember, I've been fighting against the darkness of this world, and I have never retreated. Thaddeus knew that there were beings more powerful than a special grade cursed spirit, and he had already come into contact with an intermediate hollow that shouldn't exist in this world. So things might not be as simple as he thought. I could feel your strength and bravery. I guess you had a good teacher. Director Yagamasamichi looked at Gojo Satoru at this moment and said, Satoru, take them to the dorms and give them various security measures. 1. Itadori was astonished. What did the director mean? You are qualified. Welcome to the Jiu-Jitsu school. Director Yagamasamichi smiled at this moment. Itadori looked at Thaddeus, they had been accepted. Thaddeus had put away his sword, and after it was sealed back into its staff state, he was happy to be accepted and show that he wasn't just an ordinary student. After looking at Itadori, he pointed a finger under his body. Itadori lowered his head and saw a fist heading towards his body, immediately hitting his stomach. Oh, sorry, I forgot to release the technique. Yagamasamichi opened his hands, and the doll smiled happily. Then, Gojo Satoru took Thaddeus and Itadori to the dormitory. Along the way, Gojo Satoru smiled and said, Congratulations, you have officially joined the Jiu-Jitsu school. From now on, you are fellow students, so I hope you get along well. Thank you, Master Gojo. Thaddeus wanted to express his gratitude. This gratitude wasn't just for inviting him to this school, but also for keeping his elimination of a special grade cursed spirit hidden. Moreover, if he hadn't concealed it, it would draw unnecessary attention to his history from the old onions of this world. 3. Listen, even though I have no idea why you want to be so discreet, remember that you decide the path you want to take. Gojo Satoru smiled and said, since you'll be my student, no one in this world will harm you. Of course, you are the strongest. Thaddeus extended his hand and raised his thumb. 1. Haha, ha, I am. Gojo Satoru always felt good about being praised by his strongest student. Thaddeus, I never expected that we would become close in some aspects. So, I hope we can get along. Itadori laughed and walked beside Thaddeus. Thaddeus knew what Itadori was talking about. He smiled and said, Don't worry, even though I might seem a bit serious, I'll always be here for anything. 5. Eh? For anything? Itadori asked curiously. Just saying, this world is really dangerous, so we should support each other on missions. After Gojo Satoru felt Itadori's gaze, he said lightly, We've arrived. You can discuss where you want to sleep yourselves. Actually, all the rooms are the same. Whether the main building or the dormitory, they belong to a retro architectural style. In fact, many places in Japan had this style, and Kyoto was especially prominent. Thaddeus found a room near the corner, it seemed quieter. 
From his room, he could directly see the forest through the window, giving him a feeling of living secluded in the mountains. The room's furniture was very simple, enough to meet daily needs, but obviously, you couldn't cook here. Of course, Gojo Satoru noticed this and went to Thaddeus's room and said, By the way, to prevent any student from cooking really special things, there is a separate kitchen not far from the back of the dorms. If you wish, you can cook there. That sounds good. Thaddeus was really comfortable in this place. If time allowed, as he liked cooking, he could do it if there was nothing else to do. Cough, cough. Gojo Satoru coughed lightly with his hand in front of his mouth, then said, that, if it's convenient, you can always cook more food so that everyone can eat together. Of course, you don't have to worry about the ingredients. Just as well. Thaddeus rolled his eyes and muttered, if everyone is okay with the things I cook, I wouldn't mind cooking for them. As the saying goes, where five eat, six can eat too. Is that a saying? Gojo Satoru stayed thoughtfully for a moment. But now that there was someone who volunteered to cook, there was no problem with giving it a try. It seemed that his decision this time was right. He found a student who loved cooking, so Megami could stop doing it. What's the matter, Professor Gojo? What are you talking about? Itadori heard the cheerful voice from afar and approached, seeing Gojo Satoru and Thaddeus with smiles on their faces. With lots of spice. Yes, he hates pepper too. One. Oh, nothing, but in the future, our food might occasionally be prepared by Thaddeus. Is the school food bad? Itadori realized after saying this sentence that Thaddeus could cook and seemed to be good at it. Hey, Thaddeus, can you really cook? Well, I never was picky with food, so yeah. Thaddeus just now felt uncomfortable with the high expectations Gojo Satoru was intentionally leaving him with. It tastes pretty good, Itadori. Gojo Satoru teased. Nothing special, just regular, regular. Movies? Where did that come from? Thaddeus now wanted to get out of this place. 3. That's amazing, we are almost the same age, but you're outstanding. I'm really looking forward to trying your cooking. Itadori praised Thaddeus again. That's okay, we'll do that. Gojo Satoru smiled and said, second and third year students have already left, but they should be able to gather soon. After all, there are not many students. Speaking of this, Gojo Satoru looked at Itadori and said, you don't have to fight. I'll give the task of finding the fingers to Thaddeus and Megami. You just have to wait, with my help, we'll surely find them all in no time. It might have been a bit troublesome at first, but now that Thaddeus was in the group, it would be easier as his strength could enhance everyone's security. No, I promise, so I'll do it. Itadori said while sticking some kind of image on his wall. For him, it would be fun to see Megami and the powerful Thaddeus come back with Sukuna's fingers, but his intentions were different. Creator's Thoughts SR Cuervo You can read 16 advanced chapters on my Patreon, SR Cuervo. Chapter 23, Megami was ignored 1. Yes, but you can't stop fighting even if you wanted to, Gojo Satoru said with a smile, quite satisfied with the response he got from Itadori. Ah, is this about a test? Itadori seemed to understand that Gojo Satoru believed he couldn't find Sukuna's fingers on his own. Gojo Satoru extended his hand, placing it in front of Itadori, interrupting him, if it were that simple, I would have found all the fingers myself. But even though the cursed object's domain expansion is powerful, it hides that power when inside a cursed spirit. When it comes to finding something of that nature, it's not the easiest task, but now that Sukuna is in your body, he will tell you where his fingers are since he wants to regain all his powers. Gojo Satoru smiled artificially, extending his hands, you are a vessel, and also a detector, that is, a radar, so if you weren't in the field with us, it would be useless. Itadori touched his chest, is this guy really being kind to me? I believe it's possible for you to build a win-win relationship with him. Gojo Satoru left the room. Thaddeus and Itadori Yuji followed, and after a few steps, they saw the door on the side open, and Fushiguro Megami came out from inside. Is Fushiguro there? Itadori suddenly became excited. Megami looked at Itadori Yuji and Thaddeus, there are many vacant rooms, right? Thaddeus looked in the direction of the room. Indeed, Itadori's room was next to Fushiguro Megami's room, and Thaddeus's room was separated by several other rooms. Isn't it better when the place is livelier? I think it's good for you guys to interact more. Gojo Satoru knew Megami's personality, usually a bit reserved, but he took this opportunity to get everyone involved and build a relationship of trust among them. Just classes and missions are enough. Megami said, not quite comprehending. Haha, <laughs> I think that's important. Itadori grabbed the doorframe of Megami's room and looked inside, which was very neat and clean. As I said, you're a bother. Megami frowned, grabbed the door, and hit Itadori. Oh, jeez. Itadori immediately retracted. But that's good. We'll meet the fourth first-year student tomorrow. By the way, tonight Thaddeus will cook for us, so let's gather in the common kitchen. Gojo Satoru clapped his hands and left the place. Thaddeus said, well, see you later, as I want to unpack my things. Megami looked at Thaddeus's back, who had been silent until now. This guy seemed to prefer keeping to himself, making it really hard to figure out what he was thinking. At night, the Jiu-Jitsu high school was very quiet, and the sound of some insects singing could be heard, which helped Thaddeus sleep well. Was the food really spicy? Thaddeus wondered, remembering the scene from tonight when he prepared the meal. Although he didn't make anything special, the spiciness wasn't well received. Anyway, I hope tomorrow will be an interesting day. The next morning, when it seemed like the sun had just risen, Gojo Satoru came to wake his students. The three of you should go to this place at the station to wait for someone first. I won't go with you. Just meet up in the end, Gojo Satoru said as he looked at the three boys who didn't seem fully awake, smiling before he left. After Gojo Satoru left, the three put on their dark school uniforms and headed to the train station. Hey, should we walk? Itadori curved his lips and looked outside with tall trees on both sides. There were no pedestrians at this time. Is it far from the station? Thaddeus asked Megami, as he must have been there before. It's a little closer than the places we've been walking to. It's not very far, Megami said, having no problem with walking, so he walked ahead. The three walked to the station while chatting. Most of the way, Itadori and Thaddeus were chatting, and Megami only responded occasionally. This way, the three gradually walked into the city, where there were more people, and it was a bit lively as there seemed to be an event going on. Thaddeus had never been to Japan in his previous life. In this life, as he had thought, he could experience unfamiliar places here, and this form of experience was obviously different since he lived here, but it's something. Moreover, there were cursed spirits everywhere now. There were many cars coming and going on the streets, abundant people wearing fashionable clothes, and buildings of different heights emerging endlessly. What Thaddeus saw was dazzling. Life is so good, Thaddeus exclaimed emotionally. 
He promised himself to earn more money with his own abilities and then buy his own house in Tokyo and retire comfortably. Yes, but we don't have much money in our pockets, Itadori said as he checked his pocket, finding nothing. Thaddeus smiled and said, with our abilities, money and women will come on their own. We just have to follow a very specific structure, money and women. Itadori looked at Thaddeus strangely. This young man was very special and seemed to know something about the world that he didn't. Haha, <laughs> you're the one who knows the most about money. If you need a partner, we're here. When the words money and women were mentioned, Itadori and Megami suddenly looked at each other. If they could make money and retire comfortably in such an expensive city, that meant they had lived a good life. Ahem, even though we're not doing this for the money, it doesn't hurt to make some money with our work. And about finding a girlfriend, as long as she has a pure soul, it's not a bad thing to enjoy the pleasures of life. Who knows when we might die? Well, most people think that way. Megami nodded. As someone who grew up closer to the world of jiu-jitsu masters, everyone pursued money. Some were so darn rich that they didn't care about money, and others did it afterward for their personal desires. There's ice cream over there, want to eat it? Itadori saw an ice cream shop across the street with many people. We're here to pick someone up, not to play around. Megami looked sympathetically at Itadori, besides, do you have money? Come on, Megami, you're underestimating me. Itadori took out some money from his pants, more than enough to buy ice cream. You didn't have money earlier. Megami froze for a moment. He saw Itadori didn't have money in his pocket just a moment ago. But now, where did that money come from? Yes, I didn't have money in the pocket of my clothes, but I have money in my pants pocket. Itadori laughed and was met with a punch from Megami. If you're treating, of course, I'll eat. Thaddeus was enjoying this like a child, who wouldn't eat if someone else is treating. Of course, we'll treat. Although yesterday's food was spicy, something sweet is something everyone can enjoy. Itadori walked to the ice cream shop without asking Megami. Megami looked at Thaddeus. According to Itadori, as long as he and Itadori agreed, they would ignore him. Indeed, they ignored him, too. Creator's Thoughts S.R. Cuervo You can read 16 advanced chapters on my Patreon, S.R. Cuervo Chapter 24 I'm normal It seems to be a very lively day Could there be a parade? Thaddeus' eyes inspected the place with interest 1. It's like this every day Megami, who was standing beside him, replied At this moment, both of them were standing on the side of the road Itadori went alone to the store to wait in line It took about 10 minutes for him to come back with 3 ice cream cones, vanilla, and mint flavors These are the regular ones The others are more expensive After Itadori came out, he handed an ice cream to each of them Then smiled a bit embarrassedly In fact, he wanted to have the bubblegum flavor But only when he was about to order, he noticed it was too costly It's okay, when we become rich, we can buy any ice cream you want Thaddeus thanked him for the gesture. As young people under 16, the money they can have is not much, so anything accessible to them is good. By the way, who else will join us? It was a surprise that Thaddeus showed up yesterday. Itadori asked that question while eating his ice cream. The enrollment was decided a long time ago. Of course, both you and Thaddeus are exceptions. After all, we're in a special school. There should be certain secrets and restrictions when admitting new students. When Megami said that, he happened to see Gojo Satoru walking not far from their position. You've been waiting for a long time, huh? Did you already put on the personalized uniform? Gojo Satoru greeted them. In the morning, he just woke them up and didn't know that their school uniforms had also been delivered to them. Ah, that's right, I suppose it's fine to wear a red hoodie, right? That's awesome. Itadori felt pretty good with his red hoodie. Then, can my clothes be changed? Thaddeus noticed that his clothes were the same as Megami's, basically the same as everyone else's since it's a standard uniform. Oh, Gojo Satoru looked at Thaddeus and asked, You want to change clothes? Yes, what do you want to change? Thaddeus naturally proposed something that would comply with the conditions. Besides, it was something simple that he really liked in his regular clothes. Ah, uh, a cape like a superhero? Haha, ha, just kidding, I just want to have a built-in hood in the uniform. I'd like it to be attached directly to the jacket and be big, would that be okay? Thaddeus presented his proposal as he wanted to know if it was possible or not, he didn't know how to make that request to the tailor or even what the process was to change it. 1. Of course, I'll communicate it to someone to let the tailor know. The changes should be done in a few days. Gojo Satoru wasn't worried about it, they were minor issues. All right, let's go to the meeting point then. The four of them walked towards the bustling street, surrounded by gourmet desserts and various clothing and watch shops. Itadori used his last bills to buy popcorn and strange cups. Thaddeus had already seen Nobera and unconsciously stood behind Itadori, but Itadori was shorter than Thaddeus, so standing behind him, Thaddeus could still see half of Itadori's head above. Hey, over here. Gojo Satoru also saw Nobera and waved his hands to call her. Hey, it's amazing, why is she wearing bandages over her eyes? Nobera saw some people next to Gojo Satoru and approached. It wasn't until she got closer that she noticed there was still another distracted young man looking at a person in a rabbit costume. When Thaddeus saw that Nobera had come to his side, he naturally greeted her since they had known each other before. So if he acted as if he didn't know her, she might be offended. So, seeing that they would be classmates, he decided to say hello. Hello, neighbor, what a coincidence to see you. Neighbor, Megami and Itadori perked up in surprise. Huh, eh. Kuchisaki Nobera widened her eyes, pointed at Thaddeus, and said, Hey, why are you here? Oh, it seems they know each other, that's great. Gojo Satoru didn't expect that Thaddeus knew the newcomer Kuchisaki Nobera. It was a surprise, and seeing that many of his new students knew each other, their bonding would be much faster. Yes, we were neighbors for a short period of time. She, by the way, almost hit me and left without saying goodbye. Thaddeus smiled awkwardly. Nobera approached Thaddeus, looked into his eyes, and asked, So, how come you're here? Isn't it obvious? Thaddeus spread his hands, clearly. Hey, did you join the jiu-jitsu school? Do you have cursed energy? Nobara never thought that Thaddeus, the young neighbor who was acting like crazy, would be her future classmate at the jiu-jitsu school. Only a few people could join this year, so someone who was her neighbor was really incredible. However, Nobara remembers how Thaddeus evaded the punch she tried to hit him, which only proves that Thaddeus has a stronger reaction ability, but he doesn't possess the characteristics of having cursed energy. He has cursed energy, and he's very powerful. 
Even though Thaddeus didn't know the relationship between Thaddeus and Nobara, he didn't hesitate to praise his friend. 3. Don't talk too much. Gojo Satoru patted Itadori's head, then looked at everyone and said, Since we're all here, let's go. You can talk as much as you want on the way. Gojo Satoru didn't want everyone to know about Thaddeus' abilities. Even though they are future classmates, they can't discuss those personal things in front of numerous people. Gojo Satoru took the lead and walked forward. Everyone followed quickly. It was then that Itadori approached Nobara and introduced himself. My name is Itadori, and I'm from Sendai. My name is Megami. Megami said briefly. Nobara's gaze fell on Itadori's face. This boy must be from the suburbs of Sendai. Moreover, this Megami, just from hearing the name, she doesn't like guys who are so closed off. Finally, Thaddeus' face was too rugged. To be honest, she still worried about why this guy with wounds on his face dodged her punch. 4. She even didn't say goodbye properly because she believed they wouldn't meet again, but now she felt a bit uncomfortable since now being classmates with someone like him is strange. I'm really in a mess. Nobara looked unpleasant, and seeing these people, she couldn't put in much effort to fit in right now. Hey, is he your ex-boyfriend or something? Itadori felt a strange vibe and didn't hold back from asking. Thaddeus knew that Nobara was a very straightforward girl, so she could easily resolve her concerns. Master, where are we going? Megami asked at this moment. It's rare for all four of the first years to be here. Hmm, and three of you just arrived in Tokyo, of course, we'll do some sightseeing now. Gojo Satoru's words immediately excited Itadori and Nobara. These two people seemed to have changed and shouted excitedly, Tokyo, 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 we love Tokyo. 1. Thaddeus and Megami looked at this scene with relative calm. At this moment, Megami saw that Thaddeus was a normal person compared to the other two. Creator's thoughts. SR Cuervo. You can read 16 advanced chapters on my Patreon, SR Cuervo. Chapter 25, Thaddeus Kindness. Then I will announce the destination. Gojo Satoru's words reassured both of them, sharpening their ears to listen attentively to where they were heading. Rapanji. Thaddeus knew it was a waste of time going to places like that, being a student of a jiu-jitsu school. Since sightseeing was not an option today, it should be about more than just strolling around. But as Itadori and Nobara were very happy, Thaddeus didn't want to spoil their happiness with negative comments. As a result, after reaching the destination, the faces of these two people looked ugly. In front of them stood a dilapidated building, exuding the breath of curses, which was easy to perceive. Big liar, this is actually Rapanji. How dare you deceive us? Itadori Yuji and Kuchisaki Nobara cursed for a few seconds. There is a large cemetery nearby, you know? That means there's an epidemic of cursed spirits there and in the abandoned building. Gojo Satoru explained, and Itadori paid great attention to what he was saying. When Thaddeus heard cemetery, his ears perked up, and he looked to where Gojo Satoru was pointing. It should be easier to appear in the cemetery. Itadori calmed down temporarily and started analyzing the situation, but Nobara was still immersed in the disgust of being deceived. So, they gather in cemeteries. Itadori asked, seeming to understand something about the world of jiu-jitsu sorcerers. The issue is not the cemetery itself but the hearts of those who believe the cemetery is dangerous. Megami looked at Itadori and explained the reason behind it. Oh, I see. So, it's the same as what happened at school. Itadori understood what they were referring to. Indeed, Thaddeus had come to understand on his own that places with negative emotions like horror, fear, and where people concentrate their negativity are where cursed spirits gather. When he goes to places like cemeteries, once he clears the recently departed souls, he also clears away the negative emotions. It could be said that this is also a reason why cursed spirits are not revealed to the public no one knows how much negative energy would be expelled from people. Wait a minute, does this guy not even know this? Nobara felt strange hearing Itadori say this. As a jiu-jitsu student, this is the most basic knowledge. The truth is, Megami told his what happened to Itadori at school and the fact that he ate one of Sukuna's fingers. What? He ate a cursed object. Nobara said incredulously. Normal people should have died long ago, but seeing that Itadori was alive, she mentioned, it's disgusting, your hygiene must be terrible. No, no, never mind. What did you say? Itadori looked at Nobara strangely. I agree with that. Megami agreed with Nobara. We eat worse things as children. Thaddeus mumbled, unheard by anyone. At that moment, Gojo Satoru said, I want to know how far you both can go. This is sort of like a practical test. Nobara and Itadori, the two of you will go and eliminate the cursed spirit in the building. Thaddeus doesn't have to go with you. He doesn't have to take the test. Nobara pointed at Thaddeus and looked at Gojo Satoru, saying, Is there some special treatment for this guy, or is he too weak to handle this on his own? Gojo Satoru smiled at this moment and said, Him? It wouldn't be interesting at all to let him deal with cursed spirits of that level, so I won't let him go. Master, what do you mean? Nobara looked strangely at Thaddeus. Is he stronger than me? Ha ha ha, no, I didn't mean that. Gojo Satoru looked at Nobara and said, This guy can fight against a first-level cursed spirit. Do you think he'd be comfortable with a test at this level? Once again, Gojo Satoru had omitted that Thaddeus had eliminated a special grade cursed spirit. Thaddeus didn't know if it was because he asked him not to mention it or if it would overshadow the morale of the other students, but he made sure to leave a powerful spark to keep improving and catch up to his classmates. A special grade cursed spirit? Just him. Nobara felt like she misheard. When they first met, Thaddeus seemed so weak, like a mosquito. How could he even face a first grade cursed spirit? Ahem. Thaddeus coughed a little uncomfortably, seeing Gojo Satoru mention him, but it seemed like he didn't care what others thought. At this moment, Gojo Satoru chuckled and said, He's not as strong as he appears. If I hadn't arrived in time the last time he faced a strong cursed spirit, he might have died. Okay, although I won my last battle, it's true that I lost consciousness for a few hours. Thaddeus only lost consciousness because he engaged in a close combat battle. He knew that if he had used his Shikai from the beginning, he would have eliminated that purple cursed spirit easily. I thought you were much more powerful. That explains the bruises on your face and the bandages on your hands. If you still don't have the ability, why risk facing such a powerful being? Nobara understood, her teacher Gojo just wanted to reach the point where he teased Thaddeus for passing out on the battlefield. Thaddeus also heard this, but it was a reality he had to accept. If Gojo Satoru hadn't appeared there, and a new cursed spirit had appeared instead, the chances of dying would have been very high. Hey, Thaddeus should be very strong. I saw him handle a sword with fire, it was really amazing, Itadori said, remembering how Thaddeus had released that sword so impressively. 
He firmly believed that cursed spirits wouldn't stand a chance against that fire. Did you see his abilities? Nobara looked at Itatari beside her. She found it strange that these people seemed so impressed by Thaddeus's power. Why were they praising him so excessively? Yeah, the pressure I felt that day. It's okay, let's get started. Gojo Satoru interrupted Itatari and urged the two to go up. Wait a minute. Thaddeus said at this moment, Master Gojo, I also want to go. With this great opportunity to keep improving, even if they are level 4 cursed spirits, how could he not go? Even if he only gets a few points, it still adds to his strength. Now that he can receive something more and also test his new spell, he needed to keep facing cursed spirits. The more he eliminates, the faster he'll become strong enough not to fear any enemies. Gojo Satoru looked at Thaddeus and quickly said, Okay, the three of you will go together. Listen, girl, don't interfere in my test. Nobara looked fiercely at Thaddeus. She was the one who could understand Thaddeus better here. After all, they had been neighbors for a significant amount of time. By the way, can cursed spirits only be eliminated by cursed energy? Itadori recalled that only now, Thaddeus and Nobara seem to have cursed energy, but he couldn't handle it. You are already half a curse, and you have cursed energy in your body. However, you can't control it in just one day, so you can use this. Gojo Satoru took out a package after speaking. A cursed tool was handed to Itadori. This is the cursed tool demon slaying, a weapon with cursed energy, and it's also effective for eliminating cursed spirits. It looks like a little kid. Nobara snorted and walked towards the abandoned building. Itadori and Thaddeus followed, and Gojo Satoru's voice sounded behind them, Oh, by the way, you must suppress Sukuna. Otherwise, all nearby cursed spirits will be instantly eliminated. Understood, I won't let Sukuna come out. Itadori nodded. Thaddeus smiled. Either of them could eliminate a cursed spirit of that level in seconds. Why would Sukuna come out? With Gojo Satoru here, the outcome was predictable. Hurry up, what the hell are you two doing taking pictures? Nobara said angrily. These two guys could get distracted even by looking at ants on the ground. After Itadori opened the roll-up shutter, Nobara entered directly. Although it was a bit dark, they could still see clearly. Thaddeus also entered. He looked at Nobara in front of him and said, You don't have to work hard, leave it to me. Eh. Nobara turned her head and looked at Thaddeus, Did that cursed spirit you fought break your brain? Thaddeus only wanted his points, but he couldn't explain that to Nobara. If someone else eliminates it, being here would be pointless. Let's go, Thaddeus. Itadori patted Thaddeus on the shoulder. He knew this woman was not easy to handle. She was more troublesome than ordinary women, at least. The three started searching, while Thaddeus headed straight for the stairs. The cursed energy was stronger upstairs, but the lower floors also showed weak reactions. Creator's thoughts. SR Cuervo. You can read 16 advanced chapters on my Patreon, SR Cuervo. Comment. 16 comments. Vote. Two left.